You can listen to the Backward Compatible Podcast anytime, anywhere, and any way you like. Subscribe and listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Then, join the discussion. I do notice that this is podcast start on video games, and somehow we've gotten nerdier. I like <laughs> Welcome to the Backward Compatible Thanksgiving Special. This week, we're joined by some of our closest friends for a round-the-table chat. We hear about everyone's favorite holiday gaming memories, and Doc plays our gaming confessional game. The BackwardCompatible.com podcast starts right now. Backward Compatible listeners, and welcome to our Thanksgiving special. Uh, this is episode number 17. I'm Chris, as always, and I'm joined by Jim. Yeah, I'm here as well. Uh, Jim Skyping in as usual, but uh, around the table we've actually brought together a few of our good friends, and uh, it's going to kind of be our around the Thanksgiving table chat here today. So uh, how about we go around and introduce ourselves? We'll start with Bobby. Hi, my name is Bobby Fry. I am an artist of an independent persuasion. Um, my name is Brianna. I'm a producer, so I uh, organize everyone. Uh, I'm Karsten. I'm also a producer. I don't know. I um, don't know exactly how good I am at it. Varying degrees. Just catch me on certain days. <laughs> and hey, it's Doc slash Adam Bracken. And I don't know, I produce artists of an independent persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm Eric Brody, and I'm a producer at Poly Night Games. Cool. Uh, and so Jim has a little uh, icebreaker warm-up game for us today. So Jim, how about you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, I believe you've already spoken with uh, Doc about it. He's going to be our, our subject for today. He's going to be in the hot seat. Um, it's a rite of passage. You've, you've been here long enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> sort of referring to as a video game professional uh, type game. And what, what I asked, uh, or I believe what Chris asked uh, Doc to do beforehand was come up with uh, three confessions about his video game habits or video game experience. Oh, video game uh, habits. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be video games. No, it That's cool. Be, it can be traditional games. <laughs> ah, I blew it. <laughs> but uh, the catch is that two of those are going to be completely made up and only one of them is going to be real. And you're just going to give us a quick run through of all three, you know, maybe one or two sentences each. And then we're all going to go around the table and ask questions and see if we can ferret out which one is real and which ones are fake. Excellent. You ready? I am ready. I am so ready. <laughs> I, I must give one disclaimer though. Um, for one of these is a half truth, mm. and and okay. I feel it only fair to warn you. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So, um, <clears throat> I've I've written these down so that I can say these as expressionless and emotionless as possible. <laughs> um, I will attempt to get through the real one without shedding tears. I spent over two years creating Hogwarts Castle at one-to-one -one scale in Minecraft SMP, starting just after the beta came out, whenever Sandstone was released, and finishing the week before Creative Mode was released, <laughs> at which time I swore off Minecraft for over a year. <laughs> okay, so that's number one. Number two. Even though I taught a summer course in it, and Bobby took it, I have only played three MMO RPGs ever. WoW, SWOTOR, and Wildstar. And I never fully leveled a single character. I played WoW for nearly three years, but never got my main past 72, taking full advantage of XP compression in each expansion. Worst is that I e even though I wrote about it in my comps, I did not start playing until afterwards. <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> Number three. I've played every iteration of Fallout to completion, including all DLC and Wasteland 1988, which I know technically doesn't count, but I just wanted to clarify because I knew Bobby would ask. <laughs> <laughs> this is because I am a long-standing friend with Fergus Urquhart and was a beta tester for Fallout in college. 
but we had a falling out over the name of Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. <laughs> All right, if that's true, we got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make some connections for me, and that one's the true one. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Is this two truths and a lie? Uh, one truth one and truth. two lies. One Although, truth. Said oh. that was a, a hey, yeah, one of those is half definitely a half truth. truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. Hmm. So we got to figure out which one. Right. I know which ones are truths. Or excuse me, I know one is a truth and one is a half truth. Because I have seen the Hogwarts castle. So uh, yeah. I was going to say that seems <laughs> reasonable too. <laughs> um, and I have definitely taken a class with you with an MMO component. Hmm. I was in that class as well. Yes, you were. You were indeed. So do you remember what level his character was? <laughs> I will say I, I understand the feel of never maxing a character in WoW. Like despite playing since like 2008, I've never actually maxed one. <laughs> See, if I were to say something's the half truth, it's probably stopping to play Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, or or the, the the time spent on that maybe. More than represented. <laughs> mm. I'm happy to answer questions. Mm. Uh, let's let's go around the table then, um, so we can get everyone involved, ask the questions, see if we can ferret out the real answer. Uh, Chris, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I'm trying to think of a question I could ask. Um, hmm. Just asking for more information is probably the best way to go. Yeah. Right I remember you telling me about the Hogwarts thing and that you finished the castle like a week before creative mode came out. Um, I'm trying to remember though if you did actually swear off <laughs> Minecraft for that long. Um, I guess I would believe it. I don't know. Does anyone else have any questions? I, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, my question is you mentioned uh, citing World of Warcraft in your comps. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us a little more information? What did you cite it on? Oh, excellent question. Was Actually, it was for uh, Professor Terry, mm -hmm. and the question was where, well, this was entirely interesting because uh, it, it was about the future, which is now. And he said, in 10 years, which it's been, <laughs> uh, what will social networks in games be like? And so, and within the context of that, I cited a number of things like Yahoo Games, which was really big then. I played a lot of pool. Um, <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, alternate reality games, because that was my focus. And then also MMOs needed to come up. And so I just threw in there like I knew what I was talking about whenever I really had no clue, because I'd never played an MMO in my life. What level did you get to in WoW? 73. And uh, what class? What class? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was a warrior. Orc warrior. With a two-handed axe. Did you... So you said you waited for expansions to give you the experience compressions and stuff like that. I did. Um, did you start in vanilla, or did you start in, uh, like, which, which expansion did you start in? Well, you know, it's funny. I actually started about the time that the Burning Crusade came out. Okay. Um, but I didn't buy it mm -hmm. until I got there. And then my quest was actually to get to the gate. And I had a whole little meta-narrative going along, <laughs> which was I wanted to get back to the fatherland. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and, and then my alt, whose name was Torgo, um, with Misty's out there will catch that reference, uh, but... He was the brother of my main one, mm. and so uh, I had this thing where he was trying to catch up with his brother, and he could never find him, which, of course, was because I was logged on in different places. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I used to play on <laughs> Tuesday nights with my alt, mm -hmm. and so he only got up to level, I don't know, like 20-something, mm -hmm. uh, because I played with a group. Uh, but actually, my, uh, my guild was called Lone Wolf, and I, I paid people to uh, join the guild and leave it. So that I could have my own private guild. I just wanted the a space. In game gold, preferably or hopefully. Yeah, it was. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. he did actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Not real money. The best thing they moved out. It was game five gold. bucks to be my friend. <laughs> it was game gold. Uh, but no, I, I did it because I wanted the I wanted the the space, <laughs> the guild, the guild bank space. Very nice. That's basically what it came down to. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. I believe you had a question. Oh, I was just going to ask. Um, when you say you completed. All the Fallout. So in three and four, which mm -hmm. way did you play? Which way did I play? Yeah. Well, I have a, a thing. It's kind of funny. Anytime I play a Fallout game or any game that has uh, heavy levels of karma built into it, I'll always play it pure first, uh, sort of so you can get the Messiah, uh, what we would now call an achieve, but there wasn't any such thing back then. And then uh, I'll go back and I'll replay it. And so my Messiah character is always named Theophilus, <laughs> and my. Uh, 
other character, my evil character, is always named Vixen Fox. And so I play the male and the female, and I do the opposite ends. And I can usually get most of the game content um, by, by doing it that way. Okay. And so that's what I did uh, pretty much for every single one. So what was your problem with the naming of Baldur's Gate? Mm. It was a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, whenever Tim, Fred, and Fergus and I sat around, and we were like, okay, this is what we're going to call this, it's great. Now, technically I was just QA, and technically I was supposed to be paid and never did. That's a whole side story. Mm-hmm. But what ended up happening was uh, I said that the name was stupid, and I got outvoted. Mm. And so it turns out that uh, actually the, uh, the there was a, quite a lot of pushback on that name. And they actually worked it into a QA question after that. And so it almost got named, oh, can I even remember what it was called? It was like uh, Lords of the Underworld or something stupid mm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting fact, mm. they actually were going to ship zero units to uh, Europe because, and I quote, um, we don't foresee it being a very good sales here. Dungeons and Dragons really has nothing to do with uh, the the UK. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Good Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I have my guess. Oh. Does anyone else have any questions? No. Uh, yeah, anyone have any questions? I, I, I think I do it from the start, personally, but... Um, <laughs> Which one is the truth, the half truth, and the lie? But um, does anyone have any specific questions? No. no. Uh, you guys don't want to know how I met Fergus? Oh, I just assumed I, that I, would. I like the story behind it. Yeah. 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 You know, actually, it's a really neat story because I met him on a uh, bulletin board, a BBS, for an old Commodore, believe it or not. Uh, he had this, uh, this crazy, crazy game uh, called Dargath's Keep. And if you remember, uh, one of the voices on the original was uh, voiced, uh, Killian was voiced by Richard Dean Anderson. And so there was actually this weird moment where he was updating the BBS from work. Richard Dean Anderson had just finished the voice work. And so he actually hopped on. And for like an afternoon, I partied like in a, in a quest with Richard Dean Anderson. <laughs> he, was a, he was a gnome. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> He played a gnome. He did, yeah. He and Anderson played a gnome. Yeah. <laughs> he was technically an NPC, but because uh, he wasn't sticking around. Yeah. But anyway, that that's how that friendship started. Because, um, like, a Black Isle, it, as you may know, is actually named for Scotland, where his family is from. And so we got into this Irish-Scottish thing, the <laughs> O'Bracken, which is what my name originally is, <laughs> uh, versus Urquhart. Because I asked him, I said, what is that, Russian? <laughs> and he got really pissed. <laughs> He's like, my name's Fergus! <laughs> that was interesting. Nice. But no, actually he has an American accent, which is really funny. Nice, nice. Yeah. But I gotta say, you are extremely good at lying. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, um... Yeah, I think I have a guess. I'm not sure if I'm right, but if everyone has their guess, yeah. we yeah. I think I think we should record it like privately or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to move the mic into our own room. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I didn't come here to make friends. I, I'm here to win. <laughs> <laughs> Am I about to get voted off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're in your house, so yeah. Yeah, let's keep your house for a little I'm while. Taking yeah. my pumpkin with you. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have we have a few uh, we have a few vegetables sort of arranged around right. the microphone here for decoration. It's so. pretty. It is very nice. You should you should get a, a screen cap of this. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> we should maybe make that the uh, the artwork for this. Uh, yeah, with the, yes. the microphone. In there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And our, our almond spread. <laughs> so. I will say, actually, real quick, I will say that I am surprised that you've only, at least in your studies, that you've only played three MMOs. I know, that is sort of suspicious, isn't it? Yeah, what were the three? (laughs) The three were Star Wars, Uh uh, The Old Republic, and World of Warcraft. I'm saying these out of order, actually. And then most recently, Wildstar. Wildstar, right? Okay. Yeah, which I didn't get very far with. Mm -hmm. Um, Um, All three that I I know that you've played, (laughs) but I don't know... Technically, I didn't. I don't know if you've never played any others. But That's I've where I am. Those three. Yeah. yeah. Um, I completely can believe that you've only played those three, though. It's very believable for me. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and start. My guess is going to be that the true one is actually the Fallout story. Okay. 
Um, my reasoning being, and I don't know if we all need to share this, but my reasoning being is that I know about the Hogwarts <laughs> thing. I think the half truth is that you probably didn't give up WoW. Um, the or not WoW, uh, Minecraft rather. Um, and then I'm pretty sure you've played more MMOs than just those three. <laughs> so that's that's my guess. I could be wrong. Okay. I, I'm fairly sure I know the answer now. After remembering a obscure fact, uh, I remember you mentioning on a blog post that you were getting back into Minecraft. Um, so I'm going to say that the Minecraft story is true. Interesting. Are we not analyzing each of them? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask me any questions. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I was trying to recall from our class. <laughs> Facts. She was looking through her notes. She didn't see it. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> um, I'm going to agree with Bobby. I think that the Minecraft story is true. I think the... Well, because I seem to recall something about Hogwarts Castle in <laughs> Minecraft and you stopping playing it. I think. I could be wrong. Um, the second one, the MMOs, I think is the half-truth that... What exactly is the half truth? I'm not sure, but the last one I'm pretty sure is the lie. There's too much absurdity to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how you know it's the truth. Oh, that's, right. Right. Yeah. It's so that's, truth. that's the half truth. Well, the truth the is usually stranger than fiction. <laughs> that is true. true. The thing is that he's a writer. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So he is. I think that there could be some believable fluff. <laughs> so that's we that's did give him time judgment. to prepare. So yeah. no, that was your mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. What you got, Carson? I will say that the MMO story is the truth. The Minecraft story is the half truth, and then the Fallout story. Even though something in my head is screaming, that's completely right. I'm gonna say that's a lie, and I will not be surprised if I'm completely wrong. <laughs> and I will go ahead and say that the Fallout story is the truth. Um, there just seems to it the absurdity almost seems like that could not be made up and that you would have actually done those things um, I'm gonna say that the Minecraft is the half truth um, I don't think you took that much time off Minecraft <laughs> and uh, then the lie is uh, the lies the MMO I feel like you played more than that what do you think Jim um, for me I just I'm probably gonna say um, I kind of agree with what um, Eric saying, I think that uh, you didn't take off quite that long for Minecraft. I'm thinking it was probably more like three months. That sounds about right, three, four months. Um, and I can actually, I can believe, I can believe that you've only played three um, MMOs. So um, I will say that I think the, uh, I, I, so I think that's the truth, and I do think that it is a lie that you uh, know the. Uh, Fallout creators, <laughs> but uh, if that one is true, uh, you're gonna have to give us contact info. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the verdict? All right, well, um, the reality is. <gasps> <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> uh, no, no. The, the the Minecraft story is the half truth. Ah. Yeah. However, uh, not for the reason you stated. Uh, okay. Actually, I did take off over a year from Minecraft, and they really did bring out creative mode the week mm -hmm. after I finished. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. That However, happened. if you crunch the numbers, I actually gave you a clue in here. If you crunch ah. the time between alpha and when creative mode came mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. it was not a period of two years. Mm -hmm. I spent about a year with a little bit of help Hmm. And after Creative Mode came out, I actually finished it up when the ceiling height was mm -hmm. extended because mm -hmm. one of the towers needed to go higher. It was actually a little too convex. And I need, or con, yeah, yeah, um, whatever. Anyway, yeah. Um, obtuse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Too short. <laughs> <laughs> too short. That's, that's <laughs> what Minecraft is pretty obtuse as so, yeah. 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 so, yeah, actually, the Minecraft is the half truth. Uh, but boy, yeah, I, and that one did hit me hard whenever it said, hey, you've got a creative mode now. Because uh, before that, it was like you had to do it in, what was that What was that tool called? Minecrafter or something like that? There was a few, yeah. In, MC Edit. MC Edit, yeah. MC Edit was the one. And you had torches everywhere so that yeah. the creepers show up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it really was in survival multiplayer. Um, wow. and, and we really did harvest all the materials by hand. Um, so where's the gorge that you dug everything from? I had pictures of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I sure do. Yeah, this is on the server that is now no more, but I have gotcha. the save file somewhere. Nice. Um, okay, so so there's that. Um, 
So knowing that, does anybody want to change their their verdict? No, I'll stick with it. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with what I got. Okay. Um, you're absolutely correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know and never have known. <laughs> all the creators. Um, I was kind of hoping it'd be true. I, I feel as though I know them heart and soul. Uh, because the rest of that is actually very true. And it's mm-hmm. that I have uh, completed, I think, just about every DLC on just about uh, everyone. Uh, and, and have spent more hours than I care to admit in the Fallout world. But I'm one of those guys who, who goes and checks um, like every locker and then walks back to town encumbered <laughs> so that I can sell all this stuff so by the end of the game I have a million credit uh, bottle caps you know um, so th- there's that that's the reason why I also never never finished um, the uh, oh gosh I just I lost the name of it the the, the Dragon Game. Oh, Dragon Age? Well, I've never finished that oh. one either. I'm bad at oh, the Elder Skyrim. Scrolls. Oh. Skyrim's what I'm oh. talking about. Yeah. Yes, Skyrim. Cause Wait, I, it has an ending? Well, <laughs> the main quest no. line is. It has a main quest line? <laughs> <laughs> what? So, so my, my dark confession today is the reality that even though I wrote about it in my comps, I never actually played World of Warcraft until afterwards. And then after playing, it, the game was so far advanced that I used all kinds of XP compression to get up to almost a full level character, which would have been 70 at that point. As the next expansion came out, <laughs> and I just never had the. It had to do with boars, honestly. You know, the first level, it's like, oh, kill a boar, it's the thing to do. And then you go and you kill boars for 70 levels, and they're like, you're out in the ice, and you're like, oh, kill an ice boar. And I was like, um, maybe I'll take my wife out to dinner. <laughs> I, I thought the uh, the undead starting zone was actually fairly The undead starting zone is definitely the, that was the, the best. best. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. the best. Uh, next. Only to the goblins, because the goblins, in anything, are always the best. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, actually, Blood Elves were pretty good. Yeah, See, I never tried the Blood Elves. I, I liked the Blood Elves because I played the original Warcraft hmm. back in the day. And I'm not talking any... I mean, I'm talking orcs versus humans, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. The, the one that you, you could play either as the orcs or the humans, and then they had to canonize one of the endings before <laughs> they made Warcraft 2. <laughs> which, actually, they, they canonized the, the orc ending to make it more interesting. Um, and then we had through the dark portal and all that other stuff, you know, blah blah blah. But uh, yeah, actually, that some of that Stormwind stuff is is just fantastic. It's in there, and it's great. So, of the three MMOs you've played, which one is your current favorite? <laughs> My current favorite? I'm yeah. not playing any of them actually. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, uh, but the I spent the most time in WoW. Mm. So. I, I will wake up at night having dreamed about a place that only exists in WoW. I, I, I've never done that about any of the others. So Excellent. Um, but yeah, yeah, clearly that one, I feel as if I lived there for, for three years. Mm. You know, it's kind of like looking back fondly on an old apartment. You, know, you drive by it and you're like, I'm so glad I don't live there anymore. <laughs> oh, but I do so, miss the good times. Not to hijack your podcast, but no, I found no. that really interesting, um, especially when it comes to MMOs, mm-hmm. because I, I don't know if anyone knows this around the table. Only about two of you have ever played games with me. Um, I'm a dabbler. It's like I never finish anything. Mm-hmm. And in fact, the games that I play the most of have no endings. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, see, if you'd said that, I'd known that was the truth. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, totally. But um, I'd like to say that, especially this being the theme of holidays, one of the things to do when you go home, at least... I used to be, I don't do it anymore, is you'd escape your family and play an MMO for a few hours. <laughs> um, and my MMO holiday game of all time, best MMO I've ever played in in completely subjective terms, best MMO ever, um, Farmville. City of Villains. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> and you were talking about it, and what made me think of it is you were talking about the, uh, you know, have dreams of a place that never existed. Mm-hmm. Now, I wouldn't say the City of uh, Villains, City of Heroes environments are all that vibrant. They're kind of, it's Gotham, it's, actually, they don't really have a Gotham analogy, unless I missed my guess, but the characters are what made it for me. Mm-hmm. And I, every once in a while, I'll start thinking about these characters that only existed um, in, you know, in the character creator. And, right. Um, and not that Champions wasn't a good follow-up. Um, it just didn't have quite the, the, the stay, staying power. Although I would say that uh, no other games, and I'm referring to Champions, have let me create a character called a Gorillion Dollars, who's a giant <laughs> green gorilla carrying a, a briefcase. That's brilliant. <laughs> I, I stole the joke from someone else, but I still loved 
a grillion dollars. <laughs> nice. So, well, so then, well done. One, one so of my favorites. Oh, yeah. uh, one of my favorites I never played uh, character wise was mm. Ganon Dwarf. <laughs> it, it was a that's dwarf on World of Warcraft, and I was that's like, fantastic. I was extremely surprised the name wasn't taken. So, <laughs> dwarf. That, that was early vanilla, though. I'm sure more people have done it since. So, so what is your holiday MMO to ask the table? Uh, I'm not an MMO guy. No, yeah. I'm not an MMO guy. I've tried WoW. I've tried mm-hmm. PCUO. Never mm-hmm. get into them. Um, I'm like him. It's like go kill a boar. Mm-hmm. Go kill two boars. Mm-hmm. Go kill three. No, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Move on. Let me do something different. Have, please have some progression. Mm-hmm. I don't have all day to level to level 10 just to go do something interesting. I forget when... The boar's not interesting enough and different enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you could play as the boar, that would be... A- <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, you're, let's yeah. call Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the boar. You go into an orc town and kill a bunch of orcs. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, avenge your fallen comrades. Oh, on, um, some of the... There's... Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's um, a reproduction of the vanilla WoW server. Oh yeah, um, and then you can actually play as uh, some of the enemies. Like you can actually have players oh, that's go fantastic. play as different enemies in the world and then attack the players. Nice, cool. It's a it's a you know uh, player run sort of like mod mm-hmm. community. That's neat. That's yeah. very very cool. There's so a Minecraft play. version like that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's actually uh, speaking of Minecraft MMOs, there's a MMO and I forget. I think it was called the Lost Shard, was built around the idea of Ultima Online. Oh, really? They basically recreated the Ultima Online experience mm. in Minecraft, where you had to buy plots of land to build on them and, mm. and protect them from the horrible, thieving occupants you were stuck into this world with. Right. <laughs> so it's a little bit like Arc Age. I see, I've heard of Arc Age. Yeah. It definitely is really interesting, mm-hmm. but I haven't had a chance to play it. Mm. Well, we've talked about it at length on a uh, previous podcast, mm. so go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone seems to be playing it. Yeah. So, yeah. do you have an MMO? Um, well, I'm too cheap to be purchasing things every month, um, yeah, so that. I will substitute that with Skyrim. I've started that game twice, but things keep happening to the computers that my save files are on, and then mm. I can't finish it, mm. and now my GPU's broken, so hopefully oh. I'll be able to get that fixed so I can play it again mm. when it is Christmas. <laughs> Just know you'll never finish it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, Skyrim is a single player in the world. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Just like the old Republic. Speaking yeah. of which, like. <laughs> oh, 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 ouch. Yep. <laughs> I was actually about to say, I think I think my favorite MMO was SWOTOR because it was basically a single player MMO. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked the story. I like being able to make my own character um, and, like, actually play out my own character. Mm. Um, but yeah, probably, like, as far as holiday MMO, probably WoW just by default because that's the only one I've really played long term. Mm-hmm. Right. And even then, it was in kind of like maybe a six month stretch and then take off two years, come back for another six months. And I just haven't touched it since Cataclysm. So. Yeah, that was mine too. Wow. I played, I actually played a, a whole ton of uh, MMOs going all the way back to my first one was Meridian 59. I don't know if any of y'all have played that one. No, I don't think no. I've ever heard of it. Yeah, it was on, I think it was <laughs> AOL? Was dial-up and you had to pay a whole bunch. <laughs> wow. You could play it. It was um, pre-EverQuest, if I remember right. So it was pretty pretty early. But um, I did, of course, play a lot of EverQuest. Um, that was the one that I, I think I got the most yeah, first time I got really absorbed into it because Meridian 59, 59 I think only lasted like two months and my dad noticed how much it cost. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you were paying by the minute for both your ISP and the MMO. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was really expensive. Um, then I played EverQuest for a while um, and then with World of Warcraft I got in on the beta and I played mm. all the way through um, through Burning Crusade and then after that I kind of stopped for a while and I went back for a couple other expansions, but I was never that into it after that. But I still play for um, what, three years. Is that three years, something like that? Uh, pretty much, pretty pretty solid player. I was playing regularly, so that, yeah, that was the one that I spent the most time in. Um, a few diversions here and there for other ones like EverQuest Two and um, Sword Tour. I play Sword Tour. Awesome. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, I think this is a good chance to transition into kind of our uh, main topic for the day. And again, this is casual. Uh, we can kind of bounce around, throw an anecdote. So feel free to hijack anytime. <laughs> um, but Jim, how about you tell us about what our uh, our main conversation is going to be? Um, well, actually, it's, it's actually pretty similar to uh, what Bobby brought up. Um, <laughs> kind of the idea is uh, to talk about <laughs> maybe moments in which you um, had a shared family gaming experience. 
Um, doesn't have to be limited to video games, but if, uh, I know those might be a little less common. Uh, but I'd love to hear about them. Just, I'd like to hear sort of um, when you had the most people, most family members around playing games together, or not necessarily playing, but um, watching you play or watching others play. Um, I know I have some of those stories, but I'd like to start off around the table. Um, Eric, would you like to start us off? We kind of left you out of the last conversation. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, no, like, I mean, when, honestly, when it comes to MMOs, I don't have a whole lot to contribute, so that was very okay, actually. Like, my holiday game that I typically go towards is something that I've tried doing, like, since in college is during like winter and summer holidays, choosing a JRPG that I haven't played. And typically from a series that's like really long running because I play a ton of JRPGs and yet there's still plenty of series that I haven't touched. And so like last holiday I uh, started playing like the Tales games and so I played all the way through Tales of Vesperia and and became fascinated with all of them. Yeah, and so (laughs) I've been playing those through the year. Um, This holiday I probably won't be doing that because I still haven't touched Dragon Age yet and Uh, that's going to be my next few months, hopefully. So Um, as far as, uh, as far as playing with family, um, I guess I would have kind of two stories with that. One would kind of be within video games. Um, my mom's never really... Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an only child, and so I'm very close with both of my parents, um, and not really necessarily close with a lot of my extended family. Um, and so like when it comes to video games, my mom isn't necessarily a very big game player. When I was younger, she would kind of sometimes play, uh, play like on... My, the first system that I ever played on was a uh, Sega Master System. It was my dad's. And uh, she would play, like, Shinobi and stuff like that. That would really pretty much be it. Um, <laughs> but uh, playing with my dad, actually, especially when I was younger, um, he and I would do that a lot. Um, we would trade turns again, like, on, on the Master System, or then, like, once they got me a Genesis, going back and forth, like, on Street Fighter and stuff like that. Um, and then he and I really kind of clicked with Madden through the years, actually. Um, because that was as games kind of advanced and he couldn't keep up with them as much because he wasn't playing them as much Mm -hmm. um that was kind of the one game that he and i would always be able to share um because he (laughs) to the point that he actually uh the first xbox that we had in our house uh because i kind of hijacked the ps2 that was supposed to be the family one (laughs) uh, he actually (laughs) bought the uh, xbox specifically to be able to play madden each year and uh and so he and i would have our own seasons going and then when we actually would play you know kind of share that together um, and even to this day, we kind of can share stories of our own ridiculous uh, concoctions and character creator. Um, <laughs> one of one of my favorites that he did was, uh, at the time, it might, it might have been like Madden 06 or 07, in which you could create uh, a 7 foot 6 character, yeah. and you could max out any and every single skill. Yeah, and so yeah. you could essentially have a running back who was 7'6 and 350 we pounds. We did the exact same thing. And the absolute best <laughs> part of that is you could hand it off to him. His name was Sumo. You could hand it off to him. And he would actually, anybody who would try to tackle him would instantly get injured. (laughs) And so within one play, half of the other team was injured and out of the game. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's That's very tough. (laughs) That is is fantastic. I'm I'm so sad hearing these great stories. Um, Especially when I heard the topic, like, oh, man. Because surprisingly Mm. enough, I don't come... My family didn't play video games. I barely owned video games before college. Mm. Um, so it's like, oh man, I don't have any of these mm. amazing friend stories. It's like, we owned games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had an old Atari. I had a, a Game Gear, but there wasn't a whole lot of playing mm. games. Um, uh, any any tabletop, anything like that? No, no, oh. really. We were, uh, we were not much of a, a game playing thing. I do remember getting, um, like... Uh, trying to play my dad's copy of Rise of the Dragon once, Mm. um, which was really hard to understand when you were a kid. Mm. Um, But I have to say, and stretching the the boundaries of family, family does kind of (laughs) spill over. Family is whoever you decide it is. Um, I think my best experiences playing a game as a group has been actually traditionally single-player games. And I mean specifically adventure games. Porting it to a TV and playing it with your friend, um, exp- you know, especially since how you know holidays, uh, you're off from classes, you have a little bit more free time, um, you know, you don't have to drive anywhere for for a week, um, and uh, playing the Salmon Max Telltale runs. Uh, oh nice. oh yeah. The, and yeah, each season of those got better and better, mm-hmm. um, and I was 
if if this had been like you know a few months before, I would have said it's sad that they don't do comedy games anymore. But apparently, the new Borderlands game is quite hilarious, so I need to get that. Mm-hmm. But um, did that come out? It yeah, did. I think it came like out yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's I, so I, high. I, I haven't had time to play it yet, so <laughs> I, I need to. Maybe I happened to be <laughs> in the same place they were doing the release party. Uh, it was the Alamo Draft House. Oh yeah. Um, oh wow. I was there for a pub night, and it's like. That person's dressed up zero. <laughs> <laughs> There's all the characters. What's going on here? Uh, they apparently were giving out uh, handsome jazz, Jack masks. Oh, nice. Which is <laughs> pretty great. But um, yeah, it, I think playing adventure games, um, which was a habit started when I tried to play a horror game by myself and couldn't finish it. So I had to get my friend to be in the same room to help me f- play this horror game, which um, was actually Yahtzee's... Uh, Chozo series. If you're from, is anyone familiar with that? Mm-hmm. You are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Yachty they're really good. Zero punctuation. Yes. yes. No, okay. um, ben, ben Croshaw is his actual name. Yeah. 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 Um, I got through the first game because the first game's not scary. I got to the second game and flipped the table. I could not <laughs> play it. I couldn't experience it, and I needed a friend to keep me going through it. it turned out to be a great game, especially like. Uh, if you're a fan of any kind of horror lore, any series with a lot of like deep, kind of fun, crunchy lore, um, but that kind of started the tradition of of you know playing very traditional single player games as multiplayer games, as mm-hmm. kind of someone watching it. And actually, going back to it, it was never it was never I would play, and I, that's where a lot of my background is. I would play the PC adventure games, um, but I would always keep meticulous notes and talk to people afterwards, like. Um, you know, hey, look, look, you know, I, I was playing Riven and, and naming all the creatures with my own names. Um, so I, I guess that's, in short, my story is, is changing the way you play a single player game, which, you know, proto YouTube culture, that's what we do now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the last time I've played a horror game instead of just watch someone play it for me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, Which is the best just, way to experience. I understand that feeling. I uh, I still haven't finished Last of Us because mm. I just can't get through it myself. And I've talked about that with friends of just yeah. will yeah. you come over and play it for me? <laughs> because this is a story I, I have yeah, to yeah. experience. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. but it's it was tough. Yeah, it's hard as yeah. No, I, I watched Last of Us most definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Walking Dead same way. Uh, no, I, I played Walking Dead. Yeah. Oh, that's why I can't play the sequel. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's too much. I can't finish it. I've, I've done I need it a, I need before. funny between the two. Oh, I bought. <laughs> the sequel and I have to touch this. <laughs> yeah, I had the whole one and I got through the first episode and I'm like, uh-huh, I don't want this anymore. <laughs> exactly. Where's Sam and Max to save the day? <laughs> now, you, you mentioned Sam and Max. Have, have you played Poker Night at the Inventory? Yes, extensively. It was awesome. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But the first and the, the sequel's really good. Ash, Ash kills me every single yep. time. Oh yeah, Ash is <laughs> great. They, if they made a third one, I would buy it. They won. Yeah, me too. I uh, wouldn't to even care it. who was in it. <laughs> um, that would be really fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, is it? Is everyone familiar with poker? Uh, well, well, what's funny about that is that actually got me into poker. Like, I'd never actually really played poker before. Um, and there's actually a little bit of a connection to, like, my story in that, like, growing up, um, my dad was always a really serious athlete. And I know, you know, I kind of was when I was a kid, and then I hit middle school, and I got a little chubby, and then never, you know, that kind of ended my, my athletics careers. And... Uh, so because of that, he and I never had a whole lot in common um, outside of Madden. And so like, I actually literally got into football. And then my love of sports and beyond that, if anybody knows me, they know I'm a sports fanatic, um, came through video games. And specifically when I was younger through Madden and I was able to kind of forge a relationship that I actually have with my dad now originally based on that video game. So even though he's not really the world's biggest video game player, mm-hmm. and when I was young, I was never really the world's biggest athlete, Kind we of kind of forged that through video games, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so yeah, I, uh, I've always loved card games, but had never really known anybody that played poker, and that game itself taught me the rules in the same way that Madden <laughs> taught me the rules of football. So, so Poker Night, I, I, it's in my Steam library. Now, is that one, I, I get the impression it's kind of a Telltale crossover or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, that one have Strong Bad in it? The first one did, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Which was pretty brilliant. Um, it also had... Uh, I, Either Gabe or Tycho, I can't remember which one it was um, from Penny Arcade. Mm-hmm. Um, no, the first one was great because they somehow managed to get characters with different rendering styles yeah. mm-hmm. around the table, and I thought that was pretty clever. Nice. Um, 
Yeah, Brock Samson. Was the yeah, I was gonna say I just Brock. love listening to Putty. If you guys, have, <laughs> if you guys haven't played um, SBCG Four AP, um, that might be a good comedic relief uh, between <laughs> right. Walking Dead series. So, um, for those of you who don't know the acronym, it's Strong Bad School Game for Attractive People. I, I always wanted to play that, but it was on such a weird. At the time, I didn't have a gaming PC, and then mm. the other platform was a Wii. Yeah, and it right. was like. It plays really good on the Wii. I played it on both. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, so, Strong Bad, which is awesome because it's coming back, <laughs> um, because the brothers now live in the same location, uh, which is the whole reason they stopped making it. Mm-hmm. They moved off and worked on, like, Gravity Falls. And had a baby. And, Wait, are we yeah. talking about Homestar Runner? Yes. yes. Sorry. I kept hearing Strong Bad. I'm like, surely they're not talking about Homestar Runner. We're talking about the star, Strong Bad. <laughs> <laughs> star, Strong Bad. Star Runner, Strong Bad. Um... The game is actually better than the grand majority of the actual shorts. Mm. Uh, the game is brilliantly written. Um, the, I would go back and play, play the Strong Bad games. Mm. Uh, they play out like an episode. He gets an email, and then yeah. something wacky happens. Uh, but there are a few episodes that are just absolutely brilliant. And each, of course, the way Telltale does it somehow is each episode becomes better. Mm-hmm. Uh, it builds on on the, the running jokes build on. There's an entire episode that's all um, inside of video games and stuff. Oh yeah, no, there's one like that's the last episode. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Oh, are you thinking um, of a uh, danger esque? Yeah, where the danger esque, yeah, which yeah. all ep- like they're filming a movie. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. a few of the things have like outtakes kind of set into it. That's uh-huh. really really good game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I completely lost the thread of what we were talking about, other than uh, <laughs> Telltale's made some really great games. They, they have. <laughs> now, um, now if they could just get them to run smoothly, <laughs> I'd be so happy. <laughs> oh, man, they have progressed so much since the first game. <laughs> oh, I remember having to crank it, everything down. It's like, this is this shouldn't be happening. Why <laughs> why can't I run this? <laughs> yeah. uh, for me, our, our Thanksgivings and, and holidays are always based around tabletop games and my family is ridiculously competitive <laughs> so when the Monopoly comes out it turns into warfare in the Davis household uh, my mom is an old business person my dad's a business person I have business mm-hmm. mind so it's basically like a bunch of CEOs sitting at the table thinking how things are each other over <laughs> so how it's meant to be played oh, yeah and they, and, they turn, and they turn into eight hour games because nobody makes a mistake <laughs> <laughs> we're all making money we're all the giant stalemate and then one person screws up yeah. and it becomes a feeding frenzy <laughs> so we should get you a copy of um, Diplomacy I think yes oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> oh see now here's, here's the fun part about that I've always wanted to take that and uh, I originally studied politics mm. I always wanted to take that and get a bunch of my friends around oh, play man. Diplomacy and look at each other like I know what you're doing I know your tactics <laughs> we were in the same classroom <laughs> <laughs> stop fucking <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. I've never played it myself again because I like to keep my friends. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. We, we would come into it. We're we're all that way about any political situation. We all walk into it like, look, guys, mm-hmm. this may get a little rough, but remember, we still like each other. When we're at the bar, <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to you know end friendships over this. <laughs> but it's always fun because we you know we see through each other's lies. So you know we're smiling and shaking hands mm-hmm. like, man, you were just looking to stab me. <laughs> <laughs> So Excellent. we actually did it with risk, and that was a field day. <clears throat> and we actually had to stop. We had to stop at one point, and basically break into two teams because it was just <clears throat> so so competitive. They were like, "Okay, we're never going to finish this unless we ally half the world." So we would leave, go talk to our teams, basically have uh, clandestine meetings, come back, <laughs> play our turns, see what happened, go talk, come back, play our turns. So the most fun I ever had. It took about. Three days was meeting every night, playing for about four hours. It's always fun you add kind of like quote unquote role playing <laughs> yeah. to any mm-hmm. sort of like game that's not meant to be. You know, right, right. like Risk turns into diplomacy, and that's right. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of um, I think they're called ma- um, macro games. Right? Uh, have you heard of these? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Shut up and sit down. Did a, a review of one of them, uh, like a live play where aliens were invading. So it's like, yeah, you, mm-hmm. you have teams that are all pretending to be a different nation. I like like expanding that scale out. Mm-hmm. I, I want to have a land party at some point where we gather around and play Civ like in the same room and, <laughs> and, and stuff. Kind of like you actually have like spoken diplomacy yes. and stuff like that. Oh, that would uh, be so great! Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially when when someone invariably uh, screws you over, despite mm-hmm. your supposed deal, and they're right next to you. <laughs> Three, two, one, nuke! <laughs> yeah. I am denouncing so and so. The baby has arrived. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got a new new. Uh, New guests. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry, guys. The maturity level of the show just went up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, little Ian Bracken has just joined the uh, conversation. 
So how old is he, Doc? Four months? Believe it or not, yeah, he's like the size of an eight-month-old. <laughs> yeah, <right>? he's a <laughs> <laughs> big kid. <laughs> so, he's gonna be a lumberjack someday. <laughs> well, and good he's thing okay. is he's at the kids' table then. You know, yeah, with us. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and blow his cover, by the way. He's Batman. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Very nice. Right. I'm Perfect. gonna have to get this new secret identity. Sorry. <laughs> cool. So, uh, so Doc, now that you're uh, now that you're back, uh, and since you. You're the only one here that has sort of like a, you've started your own family, so I would kind of wonder: Are you have you already started to introduce um, your child to games at all, or are you planning to make that transition at a certain age? Well, I have to say this is this, this is a, this is a little embarrassing. Um, it, he actually is a huge fan of cooking shows. Um, I, my theory currently is that cooking shows are all about uh, the face and then the food and then the face and then the food. It makes sense. <laughs> it's just close-ups of various things. And, he, you know, at this age, they're kind of programmed for that. Uh-huh. Um, but also, Chris, I can blame you for this one. He's actually a big fan of Luftrausers. Oh, nice. So nice. there cool. you go. How are you liking that, by the way? I am apparently addicted. So all right. thanks, jerk. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, um, I'm not I'm not shying away. Uh, there, there's this wonderful period where it, you pretty much show them anything and it doesn't matter, and then uh, you know the the brain kicks in, yeah. and, and he's kind of there now, <laughs> where he's actually watching the flashing images on the screen and processing them. And so I have to be like, okay, let's see, Binding of Isaac, <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> not. thematically not appropriate, visually it's pixel. I don't know. <laughs> and then that's when I ask my wife. So you know, <laughs> when in doubt, ask the wife. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Can't get in trouble that way. <laughs> but no, the, the the real answer is um, I haven't been playing that many. Uh, you know, really visually strong video games recently because I have a PS4 and there aren't any. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um, I feel your pain. So yeah, you know, um, Assassin's Creed just came out, so that, that may be changing a little bit. Actually, I'm a big fan of uh, Shadows of Mortar, like we talked about mm-hmm. uh, in, a, in a past one. So, yeah. But my dad's been borrowing that one, so mm-hmm. I expect when he comes for, <laughs> for Thanksgiving, by the time you hear this, mm-hmm. hopefully I will be playing Shadow of Mortar again. Mm-hmm. I've played my uh, like six hours so far of Inquisition, and that looks pretty good. So oh, far, yeah, so. yeah. Oh, I can't wait to start finally playing that. <laughs> Far Cry 4. Far Cry 4 is striking with what they've done. Uh, Far Cry's always been beautiful, mm-hmm. so. Yes, and they've stepped it up. I've, I'm definitely impressed by that guy. Would the water like pour out of your TV now? Or? <laughs> <laughs> We're close, working on close. it. <laughs> I don't want it to. <laughs> So do you We're have working on follow up to uh, Blood Dragon as well? Oh, that would be great. See about that. <laughs> uh, so do you have any family uh, game playing? Um, no, I'm actually the black sheep in my family, and nobody else that I associate with likes to play no. games. Oh, oh so sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess a couple Christmases ago, maybe it was more than a couple, but anyway, um, it was just me and my parents for Christmas for once. Mm-hmm. And we played a bunch of board games, and that was really fun. But otherwise, yeah, no, we don't really play mm. games. Maybe that feeds into why I prefer single player. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, fun stories like friends, maybe not necessarily in the holidays, just kind of fun multiplayer experiences? Um, well, along the lines of what Bobby was saying, of turning a single player into multiplayer, um, a friend of mine who lives up in Pennsylvania... Um, we were talking on Skype, and he pulled up Scribble Knots. Mm. So oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> he's like, "Okay, what am I gonna do?" So I like come up with random things to try to answer the <laughs> questions. Yes. So that was pretty fun. Very cool. Excellent. <laughs> it actually brings you back. I don't know why I just thought the story. Uh, junior year of my undergrad, I was living with a couple of buddies out at LSU, and I got LA Noir, and we spit. Days, all of us on the couch trying to read mm. faces. Nice. And let me tell you, when it's four people on the couch, like, did you see him flinch? Did you see him flinch? <laughs> <laughs> you think he's lying? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> yes. No, we're wrong. It's great. So it makes me want to actually see like a skit or even like a game where you've got like four detectives who are all gathered around interrogating <laughs> and they're all just like bantering back and forth and the guy's like, what's going on? <laughs> See, that's the way we play Heavy Rain. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you play it through, you do the thing, you're like, okay, it was a good game, but then what you need to do is you need to get a friend over, or even better, a group of friends, so they each take one character, because that's really fun, and then watch oh, them play it, interesting. and you've got to sit on the couch and you got to shut up. You can't tell them what to do. Mm-hmm. If you want to see all the 
alternate content. See, people complain all the time about how things are too linear, too mm-hmm. this, and I'm like, have you watched anyone else play it? Mm-hmm. Or yeah. are you just basing that on your own biased single player experience? Mm-hmm. So I haven't heard that that excuse as much though recently, and I think a lot of it has to do with Let's Plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, speaking yeah. of the people, more experience. Yeah, people mm-hmm. now can comprehend the idea of concept of mind, psychological term. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone else is having a different experience than they are, so mm-hmm. I don't know. So uh, I thought. Or, or they're becoming more tolerant of people having the same experience by experiencing more games people are playing. Right. Well, that's true, too. Um, so, uh, I find it interesting that you mentioned uh, that game you just mentioned that I forgot the name. Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain. <laughs> um, because I was actually looking at a very, very intriguing piece of video game uh, ephemera, uh, a game called Mode. Um, and it is an FMV game lost almost entirely. Um, uh, it's like a C, like three disc CD, and you're at this fashion show. Um, uh, and everyone's a little mysterious. You don't know what's going on, and all the uh, sh- like like during the night. There's different um, performance art to really stretch the term of both performance and art. Um, <laughs> and what's great is that you only have three mode uh-huh, of interaction: red green, and neutral, and you have a little bar. Uh, you can also press the dome button, and the dome button does something? I don't know. Hmm. The game is brilliant. Um, it lifts the lid is what it yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's great because playing through, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know how people are reacting, you don't know what your character is saying or what that, why they just said that to you, but if you play in a certain way, you get completely different views of the characters. Like, whoa, whoa. They are an undercover cop. I, I didn't have any conception. Um, and it, I think there's only a few games that kind of change. Really, what happens is pretty sta- like static. And this game is called Mass Effect, you said? Yes. <laughs> I wish. Um, no, it's called Mode. Oh, oh. And it, it's all full of pretentious art. I think intentionally pretentious, pretentious art speak. Uh, where it's like some you know, beat poetry. Um, and I think that really helped with it. Because it's, it's, it really is kind of this interesting web of, of people. The execution's bad. Like the FMV is terrible. The acting is is flat and badly directed, and the coding's a little off. But there's sort of like a, a nugget of, of pure gold, I think, there. And then that brings me into a game that people had a bad conception of, which is one of my favorite games of all time. And I'm stalling because I can't remember the exact title. Total Distortion? No, um, the Spy Game. Um, Alpha Protocol? Alpha Protocol. Oh, yeah. So, so much better than people like to give it. Exactly. Yeah. Alpha Protocol, and especially if you like um, like interactive narratives, yes. there will be a few times, and I can't spoil anything because that would be a sin, mm. um, <laughs> where you learn a piece of information and changes your conception of everything. Wow. Okay. Uh, and again, like there's not a whole lot of branching. There's just knowing more about the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one of the best crazy, like, crazy acted spy person in a, in a video game ever. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it was so neat about that that I'm really kind of surprised nobody else has tried to emulate is how they did their dialogue system. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that there wasn't really... They, they, they based it not on, like, good, neutral, or evil. It was all just... It, I remember in the lead-up to it, it mm-hmm. was they were basing it on three different archetypes for spies and which, spy which novels. Which JB are you? Yeah, exactly. Jack Bauer, uh, Jason Bourne, or... or James 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 Bond. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think those are great archetypes. <laughs> I don't think it quite plays to it, but there was definitely, like, there wasn't a, a moral choice. There. Yes, right. and, and for that reason, you never felt... You never had that disconnect between, like, well, this is what I thought my character was going to do, and this is what he did. No, if you chose the, I'm going to punch this guy in the face. He punched the guy in the face, and he's Jack, you know, and he's Jack Bauer, and he's crazy. Um, yeah. And what was really cool about that is it, it exactly as you said. While there weren't really necessarily branching narratives, it made every choice actually feel more effective because you had to make it on the fly. Yeah. Um, in a lot of like. Uh, games that kind of require choice and dialogue systems, you can often pause it and like sit and think like, what am I going to do? And, <laughs> um, oh my god, am I going to kill Rex? Or it's something like that. And instead... That's, it, not, even a, that's not even a choice. No, I'm yeah. Sorry. <laughs> if you kill Rex, you're a monster. <laughs> um, and so... It, but like at moments like that, you can even if there's not a pause button, you can always pull up like the Xbox button, and it'll right. still pause the screen. And then that you only have a few seconds, and you don't have that option. And mm-hmm. uh, it was really neat how they did. It. I wish that other other games mm-hmm. would do something like that because because it does take 
all of these games that try to claim that they have a lot of choice in games, and, and while those necessarily fail at that, that succeeded so well. Yeah, and that's what actually I think one of the best um, design notes that the Telltale games really hit is the kind of immediacy of, of decision. Mm -hmm. It's like, I've got, uh, I don't know. Mm. Uh, and sometimes the choice doesn't have any ultimate consequence, mm. but kind of phrasing that way, it feels more impactful at the moment. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and even like a little... They, they definitely can feel like they're going to have an impact, which I think is, is probably where they succeed the most. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, most of the choices don't really have an effect. And that's right. kind of where I think it kind of falls a bit short. But at least when you're playing through, especially the first time, before you kind of feel like back the curtain and understand what all of the ramifications of your choices are, you at least at that moment think, um, wow, a lot of different things can happen depending on what choice I make. And you yeah. do have that time limit to make your decision in the uh, Walking Dead series. So, so I have a question then. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite dialogue option in a video game? If you could pick one mm -hmm. phrase or... Oh, you sound like you have an answer. Oh, just one option. I thought yeah. you meant the game itself. No, no, no. Just one dialogue option in a video game. Mm. Um, I'll say this. Uh -huh. uh, well, dialogue interaction. Um, I'm a big fan of Planescape Torment. And ah, it's my good. favorite dialogue system game. Just because you had so many different options. They weren't just... Mm -hmm. um, they weren't so binary between good and evil. You had one <laughs> option to... Um, lie or tell the truth in a whole bunch of different ways uh, that would impact uh, the way that you could, uh, the way the interaction mm -hmm. would go and, and how you would go through the game. But um, you could also, generally speaking, you could play through just about every encounter uh, without combat by using dialogue to your advantage, which is really neat. Uh, including um, the last battle. <laughs> I think, right, well the last the, the last battle was great and that's um, probably one of the most interesting dialogue choices because mm -hmm. um, the answer, how you choose to answer the, um, the ultimate question, which is um, what is the nature of man, or what can change the nature of man, uh, is really open to your own interpretation mm -hmm. given all that you've learned about yourself and your character throughout the game. But another choice in that game that I think was a lot of fun, or at least interaction, left so choice more of an interaction. Um, when you're in, oh geez, I want to say it was um, the brothel, but I'm not sure. Um, there is this um, armoire that you encounter. Oh uh, yes, the brothel. And it's it is the brothel, right? And mm -hmm. you count, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You encounter that armoire, and it's actually a, a wizard or a mage or something that turned himself into an armoire. <laughs> and and he did this because he wanted he wanted all the clothing to be put inside of him or something, right? <laughs> yeah. It was just the weirdest, the weirdest conversation. You're talking to him, interacting with him, and trying to figure out what his motivation is. <laughs> time as I'm playing through this this game, it was right as it came out too. So um, and I it was it's I was just blown away by how strange this uh, this exchange was. But at the same time, it made perfect sense within the context of mm -hmm. the game. I would, so it was just very interesting. I have to say, it's not my favorite dialogue option in the game, but my favorite dialogue option in that game is if you lie about your name enough, mm -hmm. that person gets created. Because that's no. the nature of the world. Yeah. You, you eventually meet Aiden, who doesn't exist until you create him with your belief. <laughs> nice. I talked about that because I only did that on one, one playthrough, but yeah. that oh. is actually so brilliant. I didn't that's know that was fun. even a thing. That's cool. Oh, you can you can fight people with the pure power of belief. Mm -hmm. Leaving them out <laughs> of existence. Nice. Uh, so. That game is, uh, for dialogue, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, voice acting, great, too. Were we supposed uh, to get a sequel? What happened to that? Uh, we were getting a spiritual sequel based in the Numenera uh, oh. system. And... From the trailers, it is looking up to the task. Excellent. What was uh, the name of the... Uh, just Torment. Torment, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. That's uh, right. It looks brilliant. I can't say enough good things about Torment. <laughs> so the, the thing about creating someone with your belief, it kind of reminds me of something else that I enjoy. Um, in Mass Effect 2, um, when you go to the Citadel... If you're a paragon, you can actually offer to give endorsements to oh. store. Oh, yes! Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> you offer to give endorsements for a discount, and they're like, oh, yes, we'd love to have Commander Shepard endorse our store. So you just go up, and every time you say, I'm Commander Shepard, this is my favorite store on the Citadel. And you can do that with every store. And so you're walking down the shopping strip, essentially, and it's every time you pass by someone, I'm Commander Shepard, this is my favorite store on the Citadel. I'm Commander Shepard. It's like, I just love all the stores. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I love that little bit. Uh, that is just yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. That was pretty funny. Commander Shill. 
Yeah, Commander Shill. <laughs> I love I love the little things that you can kind of build your own shepherd out of. Mm. It's never acknowledged by the game, but you know, it's like, yeah, I, I gave an endorsement to every store in the right. Citadel because they gave me they money for me. it. Yeah. yeah. So I will actually say, because I'm holding on to this, my favorite uh, dialogue choice in any game is from Sam and Max, where you can choose cho- toys, choose the hard boiled option. Yeah. It's from the fourth episode of the second season? No, last season. The last season, near the end of it, uh, Max gets kidnapped or something, and he go and Sam goes around um, like hard-boiled detective, and he has different options, and one of them is the hard-boiled option. He just says something really like <laughs> profound, and the light shines up at him. It doesn't really have any effects. Nice. Mm. So I don't know what the other dialogue options in that game are, because that's the one I chose every single time. <laughs> yeah. and anytime you can, you know, where the dialogue, the, the choice of the dialogue option itself is the joke. Mm-hmm. That's right. brilliant. That actually uh, comes mm-hmm. from a talk between uh, Ron Gilbert and... The other Monkey Island guy. Okay. Yes! Okay. Um, where they said that, uh, you know, if you have four dialogue options and you're a comedy writer, that's four... Op- you can make a joke with each dialogue mm-hmm. option. You don't have to mm-hmm. choose it. Which I always thought was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Nice. There's, some great choice- There's some great dialogue options in the Monkey Island series. Yeah. Oh, oh sure. So many funny ones. So, yeah. You just want to go through and pick everyone. Yeah, Fourth yeah. wall, breaking meta stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. El Pollo Diablo. Yeah, El Pollo Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did love that um, that Papa Pichu gag, where you in Monkey Island two, three, three, um, where if you read, you know, Papa Pichu is dialect for for ouch. Mm-hmm. If you read that, then every time he says ouch for the rest of the game, it's Papa Pichu. But if you don't read that, he just says ouch. <laughs> Really? Oh, yeah. Funny. He won't say Papa Pichu if you don't know what Papa Pichu means. Huh. Uh, See, so that's I, clever. Oh, it's yeah. hilarious. It, oh, it, Papa Pichu. It's kind of like um, in Borderlands 2 when you would do the quest where you're trying to name the... Oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and every time he came up with a new name, it would actually change the name of all the bully right. brains. Yeah. And eventually, I forget what it was, it was like fart something. Oh, yeah, yeah, farts. Boner yeah farts. Butter, butter, butter farts. <laughs> and if you don't complete the quest, it stays butter farts the right. entire game. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a brilliant piece of mm. something. I'm not sure what. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm sort of the men of action guy, so mm-hmm. whenever there's a physical, like, punch him in the face option, mm-hmm. I'm going straight for that. Nice. It's like, oh, I can skip this tree? Punch him. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love that option. Yeah. There, was, there was a gag in a um, uh, Foxtrot yeah. where they were made, he made his clone of Mist. It's like, it's it's like Mist, but there's raptors. So the <laughs> and I was like, oh man, what if you took Misk and like added action elements completely arbitrarily? Sure. What a Misk with a shotgun that you can blow off the, the locks to the doors with? It's brilliant. I love it. It's a much shorter game. <laughs> there it is. But my answer is um, I guess I'll go back to Fallout here. Any. Any dialogue option that has to do with a low intelligence character. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, the low intelligence <laughs> runs are so good. Yeah, yeah. because you, you know all the side quest stuff, you, you pretty much can count out. But you can you can finish the game. You won't get any plot. <laughs> People will attack you, <laughs> but it usually doesn't matter because you you've poured all your stuff <laughs> and your stats into like <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can you can just punch the wall. Yeah, you just punch them. <laughs> I win game. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the, it's like our Ar- 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 Arcanium, which. Yeah, it had its problems, but it had the same, like, they could talk to you and you and the, the, the mystical guy, he goes, Oh, we're gonna have problems, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Go to town! What happens if you make your, um, your dump stat intellect, but you pour it into charisma? I think, actually, a few games did have low charisma mm. uh, runs, but I don't know which ones did. Mm. Yeah, Fallen wasn't like that. I mean, uh, Arcanium was a stat for, for getting people to join your party. Mm-hmm. The problem was, if you couldn't speak to them, you couldn't do mm-hmm. that. So you yeah. kind of had to balance. It's kind of like uh, you know the, the, the pirate ship problem. You have enough cannons, but you'll have enough men. Mm-hmm. You have enough <laughs> men, but you don't have enough cannons. Okay, gotcha. Uh, you got to balance funny. the two. I, I did, speaking of Fallout, I did work very briefly with one of the persons who uh, helped program Fallout 2 and Planescape, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, no, he was an artist. Um, but he Passing helped. Notes. He helped the programmer on the unlucky dog. Uh, like, you get like a follower who's an unlucky dog and just causes everything to happen badly. Yeah, mm. yeah he, he 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 personally apologized for that one, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> also, funny trivia. You know the 
horrible cover to Planescape. Just the absolute worst cover. Just a blue guy. Yeah. Which doesn't. Yeah. You know who that is? Yeah. The publisher. Really? He didn't tell anyone. Apparently, he <laughs> kind of snuck in and took the picture and replaced the the uh, rendered art they had for him. Oh, that's uh, funny. At least that's the story that I hear. Completely apocryphal. Mm. But um, <laughs> you, you show that that's what you know, it's funny that we have so many publisher you know producers around the table. Mm -hmm. um, Oh no, we're playing our trolls. Playing yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of sneaking in at the end. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, oh, I, I'm reminded, um, going back a little bit to the uh, like experiencing everything there's to see in the game conversation, um, I played not too long ago, and I'm still not done with it, uh, Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward, oh. um, hmm. which is very visual novel-esque, um, but it's also kind of got this choose your own adventure aspect to it. So it's the gameplay, the primary gameplay, so to speak, is um, basically you have to escape a room, and there's some puzzle set up in the room, so you have to like look around and figure out things, and you have to sort of turn this knob the right way and type this into the computer and then the door will open. Um, but um, what I, prime numbers. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> but what I find more interesting is just the, uh, the story and the conversations and stuff. So you have these really interesting decisions. The first time through, it's kind of like, okay, so what would I do? Um, I'm going to do this and trust this person and then get like, you know, totally betrayed for my trust and that sort of thing. Um, and then you see kind of like a bad ending. And then you realize after the first playthrough that you've got this giant web that actually lay out and show you here are all the different paths you can take. Yeah. Um, and so the point of the game then is to go through and experience everything. And actually they do a pretty good job of making some uh, hidden information um, come mm -hmm. to light. Um, so it's not too repetitive. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was pretty neat. I've played a, a lot of games from that same creator. Um, what's interesting about that one is it's, it's kind of built around the idea of the pr prisoner's dilemma, mm -hmm. where you're mm -hmm. yeah. they uh, only it's modified. It's not exactly the prisoner's dilemma, but mm -hmm. um, there's definitely you, you ally or betray, and if right. you get down to zero points, you're dead. Mm -hmm. um, but there's it, it gets definitely what you step further into the game, the curtain becomes a little bit mm -hmm. more uh, yeah. permeable. <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was super intrigued by the Prisoner's Dilemma setup for the game. That's why I got it. Right. And then I was a little bit disappointed, but it was still good enough to be like interesting in other ways. Have so. you uh, played Ever 17? Oh. I have not. Okay, that was the, like, way, way back. That mm -hmm. was like the PC, one of the first ones. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually kind of seen there's... I love it when you get a long-running series with a director at the helm, where you kind of see reoccurring themes. And uh, that's actually one of them where the kind of the theme of, of reality being permeable mm. is, is uh, very, very strong. I won't spoil anything about it, um, which is why I like um, uh, the shooting games. Yeah, Kojima's games. Uh, oh, that was yeah, that's the word. Metro Solid. 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 Of this being audio only, just the looks of like the shooting games started so strong. Right. What on earth could he be talking about? Apparently, the Metal Gear Solid. No, the Metal Gear Solid games, even if you don't like them, mm -hmm. I think you have to uh, appreciate what Kojima has done with a oh, series. Totally. It, it's, oh, it's I, I love them so much, and I, yeah. I embrace the 40 hours of cutscenes. <laughs> that's, that's, it's part of the charm of Metal Gear Solid. Okay. <laughs> the, 40, the 40 hours of cutscene 4 is definitely the worst about that. Four becomes better yeah. the more of the side games you play and come back. Yeah, because it um, it, it was trying to. It, they were yeah. kind of wanting it to be the last game in the series. It really and they shouldn't have done everything at once. Yeah, um, Kojima.txt. Yeah, <laughs> well, it, it works so it works so because it left so much room for him to go back and explore Big Boss. Mm -hmm. Because the end of four leaves this entire gap between you know mm -hmm. the Metal Gear, the early Metal Gear games and Metal Gear Solid, where you're like. So what was Big Boss doing? Yeah. And Big Boss is very, very clearly the best character. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What's, what's really interesting about 4 is actually when I played through it, um, I hadn't played 2 or 3. I'd only played 1. Oh, um, interesting. And so I had very little context going on before. <laughs> um, but what was really neat about it was that... Um, they, I bought a guide, and in the back of the guide, there's like this ten-page small text, and like, and these are like magazine-sized pages, small text with lots and lots of columns of the guy basically breaking down everything you need to know about the Metal Gear um, anthology in order to understand everything that's happening in the game. And when I read that, it's like. This is an awesome story. Like this is yeah. really cool. <laughs> it, got, it got a little weird in the middle. I gotta say, yeah. uh, two got kind of weird. Can we all be honest here? Oh yeah, two no, no. Well, that was, I think it was trying to be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I actually, I actually loved uh, two, but it definitely got very, um, 
metaphysical the right word? It really yeah. kind of it it went beyond its own sort of uh, philosophical narrative and kind of went extremely meta. Yeah, and it's it be too meta. meta. Yeah. But you look at the game, the game world itself in a different way. Is the impression that I got is because the whole last scene, if you remember, when um, Raiden. And, Everything starts to become revealed for Raven and kind of realizes uh, his <laughs> place in the game world. Mm-hmm. I felt, uh, for me, that was kind of where the game almost kind of shattered and you're sort of left with this completely different perception of what's, what was actually mm-hmm. occurring. Right. Um, uh, cause I don't know when you played two or what order you played the game in. Uh, games in, I know for me, I played uh, the third game first. So I kind of. Not bad. Chron- Chronological, yeah, that's a good way to do it. Then, yeah. Uh, also, best game in the series. Starting with the, the uh, Metal Gear Solid Peace 1, or maybe Peace starting Walker. with Metal Gear on the NES. I don't know if anyone did that. I, I, so I, I played only a little, a few minutes of that when I rented it. <laughs> <laughs> years and years and years ago, when they used to rent. Uh, <laughs> rent games? Yeah. Yeah. That the day. I, I still do that, but they mail it to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's coming back. Um, it's going to be streaming. Um, yeah. I didn't really yeah. understand how to play the game. I guess maybe because I was just too young. I didn't really like the whole mm. game. So I never really got into the series until Metal Gear Solid. And even then, it took me a while to kind of understand, um, sort of embrace the kind of stealth atmosphere because it was mm-hmm. so different from what I was used to. I couldn't understand why I didn't just stand up and shoot this guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, oh, but then other people show up. Well, wait, can I just shoot them too? I don't understand. What's the deal? I keep dying so easily. <laughs> uh, but once you kind of get into a rhythm, um, I think definitely the games are a lot of fun. And I do mm-hmm. think that the cutscenes and the way that the story is told as long as it's not too overbearing, like Metal Gear Solid 4, I felt, went a little bit over over the top at this point. Too. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely would say I'm, I'm a fan of the series. Yeah. I mean, I, I think 4 had it, a Herculean task, because I, just you know, for full information, I played them in order of release. I actually have mm-hmm. been playing it since 98 when Solid came out. Nice. And, um... Nice. Yeah, so I should tell you something. Uh, for the Herculean task of tying all those loosens up. Yeah. Because three kind of told you who the quote unquote philosophers were with the legacy and, and the patriots and all that stuff. And it didn't make a whole ton of sense. And then to go back and say, okay, all these loose ends that we just left and didn't tie up, let's go tie all that up, let's bring everybody back, and let's finish it. Mm. I do not envy Kojima. <laughs> um, I also like how it, but it makes sense in the end. What you think of the, the entire narrative as a critique on making games? Yeah, mm-hmm. it didn't. It didn't click for me until I played for mm-hmm. through that lens, and you can kind of see Kojima talking about I am. I'm sort of slave to my own system, which I built. Interesting. And now yeah. I'm trying to break free. I'll have to replay forward with that in mind then. Yeah. That's I, I, I would say, say congratulations, you finally made me interested in playing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, yeah. Um, it's not the only reading you can have those yeah. games, but there's definitely a very big meta. Um, huh. I mean, it's, especially in this, uh, two. Not, does anyone really care about spoilers to Metal Gear Solid Two? We do spoilers on the show all the time. Okay, so go for it. Yeah. Um, spoilers. I mean, <laughs> the thing that I always thought was really interesting about Metal Gear Solid Two, and full disclosure, it didn't become interesting until much, much later, because in the kind of the playing of it, you don't really get it. It's not presented all that great. The main character is a recreation. Deliberately of Snake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've always taken that to be Kojima saying they wanted me to do Metal Gear Solid again. Mm. So I did it and you didn't like it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember the huge fan backlash against uh, Raiden. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Raiden, Raiden is Snake. He's mm. like, he was built to be another Snake in a different way. And, like, and it seems like each game is kind of. <laughs> and the, of course, the second game, you know, the, the big plot is we've recreated the first game in a different setting mm-hmm. for you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, which I always thought was just really fun to kind of to kind of look at. Uh, but uh, a lot of the Metal Gear games have been doing the same thing differently. Um, which is why, like, Peace Walker is so great because it's so completely It's not. so different. <laughs> it's the limitations. The limitations of the PSP hardware made something that was so different and so, so amazing. It was really... And then it goes... Just, okay, if you like... Um, when Metal Gear games go off the rails, that one pretty much starts off the rails and just and starts rolling. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps going. Just keeps going. There is it is a tie-in 
to uh, Monster Hunter in that game, <laughs> where you fight a giant dinosaur oh, metal right. gear. Oh, right, that's what that was, okay. That you then have to fight multiple times to grind it for parts for an ultimate weapon, yeah. just, like metal, <laughs> just like Monster Hunter. Yeah, I didn't realize huh. that's what was. I just yeah. saw Rex, and I thought they was just like, hey, there's a pun on Metal Gear Rex. You know? Nope, there is a <laughs> giant, and he has like a bone thing that shoots blood lasers. Um, <laughs> it's so Brilliant, and the game ends three separate times. Oh, God, yeah. there's, there's the ending of the game, yeah. then you continue the missions, and it's like, wait, there's still story. Yeah. And there's like more after that. Yeah, they have three. I think they have each one has someone getting a phone call and answering it after the credits. Yeah, <laughs> and it keeps stack. It just keeps stacking. Even for even the phone call after four leaves room for him to go back and do something else because it says mm-hmm. uh, he's gone to live. There's stories there because yeah. it's not dead. Yeah. Um, strangely, have you heard some of the theories about what they what people think they're doing with five? Uh, not a ton, actually. I've been in the dark pretty deliberately, but uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I'm not gonna pull you too far into the light. <laughs> there are theories floating around because you know you've seen the original Phantom Pain trailer. So oh, yeah. the third oh, person. Yeah. There's one person that looks like Big Boss that nobody's talking about, and that's Gray Fox. And there's a theory rolling uh-huh. around that you are not playing as Big Boss. That you're playing, but you're playing, as, playing as Gray Fox. That would be fantastic. There's another theory floating around that uh, Quiet is actually Chico. Yes. Wow. That, that would the, blow my mind. That the trauma, the trauma of seeing uh, his sister explode drove him towards a sex change and to, that to is quote, unquote, the, that honor is his sister. Interesting. By the way, the, PS, the PSP game is so worth playing, I cannot even, like... Which, it, 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 and you're you're talking about Peace, Peace Walker, right? Yeah, did yeah. You play, did you play Portable Ops? Or I, Peace Walker? I didn't. I didn't. So I, I skipped. Did, I skipped Portable um, Ops. It, it was almost like Peace Walker beta in a sense. It had the yeah. mission concept, and it had the um, the Fulton the system and rat, oh, uh, something like it. Novel Fulton system. They, they used. Fulton system. Um, it kind of it, it's almost this like missing link between the two systems. <laughs> Um, I actually ended up enjoying Portable Ops, even though I do think it was a flawed experience, and then mm. Peace Walker kind of perfected that style for yep. Portable uh, Metal Gear. So I have did, to say, did either of y'all play Metal Gear Acid? I, I have a copy. I have. Yeah, I, I played like it. five minutes. It's, it's hard. It's hard to get. I played the Game Boy Color Metal Gear game. Oh wow! Oh, that, that, was, that was awesome. Actually. Really good, actually. <laughs> Those bagels are awesome. That's actually one of the best in the series. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, it's really good. It's, um, I remember I played that more than I played any other ones. Honestly, like because the other ones I kind of watched it, or, or co-played. Um, is it? What is the name of that one? Like Ghost. Ghost Battle. Yeah. Go, sorry. Go, oh, Ghost Battle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love a series that you can never take hundred percent seriously because somewhere in the series. There are Zan- po- poisonous Zanzibar hamsters, <laughs> and that is an important plot point of one of the games. <laughs> you should never, never take the series too seriously. Oh yeah, it, it was funny because with uh, Ground Zeroes, I was actually kind of liking that it was taking what felt more like a realistic approach. There was mm-hmm. less kind of like there was no cardboard box. Um, like a lot of kind of like the Metal Gear isms were kind of gone. Yeah. But I liked it. It was really cool. Like, and then of, you've seen some of the new ones where, where, where they keep wing a whip. So yeah, uh, there's a there's a dog named Diamond Dog. Yeah, and that is the best thing in the world. Um, the uh, I, I saw a gameplay preview if where they, if you don't have to Fulton that dog out, I'm gonna be disappointed. <laughs> they uh, they stick a little balloon to it. <laughs> well, speaking of the Fulton, so what happens is there's a helicopter they want to take out. They put a Fulton balloon on a jeep right below the helicopter. Oh, right. The Fulton lifts the jeep into the helicopter. It's like. I was hoping you'd move away from the Fulton, and I made it like a mechanic. So glad, <laughs> so glad. Oh, the Fulton. The Fulton no, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad. I love the Fulton. The, Peace <laughs> Walker. Fulton, Peace Walker had tanks out of cardboard boxes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they really went off on the cardboard boxes. They really, they really did, actually. Yeah, you could have like the two-person cardboard boxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, something that I'd kind of like to get everybody's feel on, um, you had brought up how in 2, um, mm-hmm. there was a reveal that the character that you were playing isn't actually the character that you thought it was. Right. There's a number of games that have done this, and it almost seems like in every situation, it's people kind of... Like it. People don't like it. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, Final Fantasy VII did that as well, where Cloud found, found out that he's not actually um, right. who he thought he was, that he's, he's playing as Zack, and mm-hmm. that well, all of his What's memories interesting is that, that comes so work. far into the series, mm-hmm. people, it, people don't get upset, because, like, it does, it, if it comes early, you, you haven't... It doesn't feel like a... It feels cheap reveal. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I, I really think it is just a series of time. Like that comes so late, people don't actually care. Right. Yeah. Um, that barely. I don't see that being brought up a whole lot at all. Mm-hmm. But any game where you start as one character that switches very quickly into another, especially if it's such a, a popular, visually iconic character. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, if you imagine if Halo, you played one level as Master mm. Chief and then the next level as... I, I've, ex- I've expended my knowledge of, mas- of, of Halo lore, actually. So, right now. Or, like, <laughs> or Master Chief. Well, like, they Master did. Chief for a chapter and then the Arbiter for the rest of the yeah. game. Yeah, but they, right. did, they did that in they, they, they two. Al- they alternated. They alternated. People, people, hated play, yeah. play, people hated playing Zarya. Really? I yeah. love the Arbiter, dude. He had a sword. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. This is funny, because I, yeah, I thought that was yeah. really cool about yeah. that, that you weren't playing the same character. But I think there's a difference between, like, that and lying to the player as well. Like, that would be, like, the equivalent of, like, You've never seen Master Chief without his helmet, so like maybe a better example would be like if in the new uh, Metroid or something, Samus took off her helmet and it's not Samus, mm. and like how would players Blow react? Oh my mind! Yeah. I'd be so ticked it's off. Like, wait, what? Did but Samus yeah. takes off the helmet in Mario. <laughs> And you redeemed it. <laughs> it's a me, it's a me Mario. No, um, no I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I think, I think it's more the gotcha that gets yeah. people mad because with the uh, Metal Gear, it happens so quick. You play a snake, you play the tanker, yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> nope. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you keep teasing people with snake oh. popping in and out, yeah. in and out, in and out. Yeah. So it just kind of like it's almost like a jab. It's like it's poking right. you a stick. So you actually can give another series that's like that. It's uh, the Phoenix Wright when you. Isn't um, the fourth one you start as Phoenix and then switch over to Apollo? Uh, well, yeah, so there was a whole game that was Apollo. Oh, okay. Um, right, right, and right. I think that takes some people off. And then Apollo makes an appearance again. I love five. Apollo. Right. Yeah, so four was Apollo. But five. I think people had... were so ch- ticked off because the series was so much mm-hmm. Phoenix, Phoenix Wright. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Not Apollo Justice. Mm-hmm. So, kind of an interesting take on that. We had talked about Heavy Rain a little bit earlier, um, mm-hmm. and you've already said spoilers are okay, right? Yeah, yeah. Is everybody okay with this? Mm-hmm. Okay, because it's, it's pretty big. Okay. So, at the end, you find out that Shelby is the murderer. Right. Yeah, or and, of course, killer. like, yeah. I, that's or always been... <laughs> Thank you for bringing this. <laughs> They're French-Canadian. Leave them alone. <laughs> oh, poor Dave Cage. Um, and, and, like, that's always been, as much as I love that game and what mm-hmm. Cage is trying to do with that game, that's always been my biggest gripe with it, is the <laughs> fact that you are playing as the character that you're trying to find, and the biggest issue with that is now you've created this dissonance between the player and the player's motivation hmm. and the character's motivation. Because then what Cage was then trying to do is he's trying to make Shelby's motivation mm-hmm. What he's doing in every single scene is different from what he's actually thinking. And especially if in one case he could have done that successfully. Uh oh. <laughs> Had a little spit up on the table. That's awesome. <laughs> Welcome to Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. <laughs> um but anyway, yeah, like I mean what um what happened, like if I think it would have been more successful if he had made sure that every time you played a Shelby, Mm -hmm. he was in the room with another person. And so then you could have explained why he was acting that way. Mm -hmm. But there were times that he was by himself and he was trying really hard to solve this mystery. Mm -hmm. See, again, without going through every scene, I think it's actually a really valid reading. Um, I think there are a few parts where um, the player motivation, the character motivation come together in the same direction for very, very good. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that just, they're so good in my mind that's blanking out all the ones where it's bad, Mm -hmm. especially where you have to take care of the baby. Uh, Shelby has such a big thing about fatherhood that when you take care of the baby and when that reveal, it's like, oh, that's great. So I forget all the times when he's actually trying to solve the mystery. And he's not really solving the mystery as much as he's trying to destroy evidence. Right. Right. But... Um, I, I, can nev- I still think that's an comp- incredibly valid complaint to the game is that I think especially Heaven Rain almost does things perfect mm. <laughs> um, and considering how ex- how terribly bad the previous game he made was I think uh, that's a huge leap forward that's true yeah. oh, I really prophecies. wanted to see the next game and there wasn't one yeah. there was um, well Beyond did you ever play Beyond? no I didn't that's true mm. that's true I think, I think there was no Played it. Yeah, I still, I still have. Don't, I, I, I need think to get around. That's what, that's don't what I really it. mean. Don't, don't do it. I wanted there to be another mm-hmm. heavy, heavy rain, rain, and there wasn't. Um, to to me, one of the most compelling ways to play that game is to actually turn off um, the controls, which is an mm. option. <laughs> I didn't realize. Uh, there, there's a couple things you can you can play with move, which is a whole different experience, and then you can also just turn it off, so you're just making choices. So it no longer becomes can I 
do the sequence required to cut off my finger, it's mm -hmm. am I making the choice narratively to cut mm -hmm. off my finger? Oh, interesting. It's an entirely different playthrough. Interesting. It's very interesting. Does it make certain scenes, like, say, when you're cutting off your finger easier? Because then you're not well, the one who's actually actively doing it. That was a great it. scene. I mean, it depends on what type of player you are. Right. Because I experienced uh, heavy frustration in that moment because I really wanted a certain narrative thing to happen, but was incapable of doing it physically because of the, the Twitch mechanics. Mm. And so if that one thing had just been a little bit easier to do, then I would have been okay. Uh, whereas whenever you turned it off, then you could actually experience that ending. So mm. um, I don't know. It For a game that's that's as non-linear as it is, and understanding that I don't mean it's branching, I mean different things, but um, compare that to, say, The Walking Dead, which is really quite linear, mm -hmm. then... Um, Excessively linear, actually. <laughs> you know, there, there are bottlenecks there, but they're... I, I honestly don't know which is worse. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get a chance to redo it if you mess up, unless you just reload the whole chapter in um, Heavy Rain, or it's, oh good, I messed up, I gotta do this scene again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is what happens if mm -hmm. you you fail to knock the walker out like you're supposed to, this mm -hmm. very, very specific way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm thinking specifically of the, of the car um, junkyard scene, where you have the fight. The detective has yes. the, the, the fight, you know, and, and you, there's so many ways that that fight can go. There's just literally just hundreds of permutations, thousands probably of permutations of the way that, that that can go. But I got really nervous towards the end of it, but then I finally won the fight, you know, and it's like, whoa, okay, fine. And I never did quite figure out how much of that was scripted and how much of it wasn't. And that was the point. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So kind of uh, coming back around the long way, uh, Jim, you have any uh, good holiday gaming stories? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Um, I, was, I was thinking partially about uh, what Bobby was talking about, single-player um, adventure experience. Okay, so this, uh, when I was, this actually happened at Thanksgiving. I used to go to my uh, grandparents in uh, Louisiana, uh, in Ruston, they had a farm. Ooh, and Ruston. and uh, my grandfather had just gotten an NES. And uh, this was, of course, pretty far back in the day that NES was the hot system at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Um, he had picked up this game that I had not played before that I thought would look pretty cool, and it was called The Legend of Zelda. Um, and what? I Legend of what? Heard of it. <laughs> Legend of Zelda. Uh, yeah, you may have heard of it. Never heard of it. Um, Is this so, the game where you play as Zelda, I think? It was, uh, <laughs> your main character's named Zelda, right? Right, right, right. right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, had, I had a NES uh, at the time myself, but I only had, I'd only just gotten it, and I only had a couple of games, and Legend of Zelda was not one of them. Um, and... It was. Uh, I got it a few months before we actually went over there for Thanksgiving, so this was kind of a big thing for me. I was able to see a different game. Um, he, everyone had uh, finished Thanksgiving dinner, and we went into sort of the main den area, and he was showing off this game. And uh, he kind of set me down in front of it, and he handed me the controller, and he said, "Hey, do you want to? You want to see if you could find the way to the next dungeon?" Cool. Um, and awesome. it was. I remember I had pretty much my entire family there, extended family as well, and just kind of like watching me, and I was maybe six years old, seven years old, playing Legend of Zelda. I thought it was one of the coolest experiences because I was able to actually um, kind of show off, and I had not even played this game before. I was able to kind of show off, and I found, I remember the, the first fairy ring um, that was near the, the uh, first dungeon, and I was able to find the first dungeon. Um, I thought that was just such a neat experience, and uh, I believe that very Christmas, very shortly thereafter, I was able to get the game for myself, uh, because I never shut up about it, so, <laughs> for my parents. Um, but yeah, for me, that's something that really stood out. I know I've played, I played games with my parents, but normally it's uh, board games mm. and uh, tabletop games. So um, other than that, um, Mario Kart, those sort of games I know I've played with my mm. My mom is, has been willing to sit down and play Mario Kart with me. Um, my dad tends to be a little bit less into that. Chris, did you have any any gaming experiences to share? Yeah, so it's not quite Thanksgiving, but it is holiday. Um, I think the most fun I've ever had um, playing games with family over the holidays was we were up in Ohio, and the uh, Wii had just come out, so we brought that with us. We are visiting our grandparents, and we also had some of our extended family in there, so like you know, my mom's 
uh, brother and sister and other people like that. And um, there was also my, my, I have an Italian family on my mom's side, um, partially Italian at least. And so we have, we, when we have a, a, a family get together, it's <laughs> like everyone else's family reunion. Um, <laughs> so we, we have like this massive party. My grandpa uh, renovated the garage um, and kind of turned it into this, um, like it's this big, like, you know, three, four car garage that's separate from the house in the back. Um, and he's turned it into, uh, we call it the, the Kaminsky clubhouse, the Polish clubhouse. Um, <laughs> And so there's uh, there's guest um, accommodations up in the upper level. It used to be the attic, and down below there's um, like a little kitchen and tables. Um, and he's got a projector set up, so we all played um, Wii Sports. And we had a couple of parties during the week too, so we'd have a bunch of people come in. So we had like I don't know how many me's we created on there to make sure <laughs> everyone had their avatar in the game. But we just had dozens and dozens of me's which was awesome because then as you're playing the games they populate with your your console mm -hmm. um and so you see like oh look there's uncle so-and-so and aunt so-and-so and you know little you know so-and-so that little so-and-so yeah. <laughs> this rascal that one um but uh we just had a blast with wii sports because uh you know everyone could get into it really easily it was easy to explain um my grandparents very quickly picked up on bowling and mm -hmm. we played it way more than i would have liked um and they kicked our butts uh, <laughs> because they mastered that thing um but now i mean like we did all the things we uh we got some people together you know for golf we'd play like 18 holes of golf or whatever you know we'd uh we go through and have like boxing tournaments stuff like that. So it was it was just a, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun to do that. Excellent. Well, I think that the Wii was really good at doing what like board games did for a long time because it, yeah. it, it seemed to be like what everybody kind of talked about was that it, even if not video games, like all families at least kind of played board games at one point in time. I know that's right. true. definitely true in mine as well. So like I mean, while my mom didn't play video games, she is a board game fanatic. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, and being a household of three, it was always tough for us to do it, especially when. Mm -hmm. dad Dad didn't want to play, and so mm -hmm. we had to figure out how to play Risk with two people. <laughs> <laughs> really difficult, but uh, it's all about the dice. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but that was, I think, what was so cool about the Wii is like it, it made that level of uh, expertise that was required mm -hmm. so much lower. Yeah. Um, and the rules were simple, especially on like stuff like Wii Sports, mm -hmm. and it was an open enough an experience that you could add on. Um, anything that was required to make it more interesting for like people who had played it a ton, and mm -hmm. there was still enough there for everybody else who hadn't played it to, to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely got my use out of the Wii. Mm -hmm. I mean, for as much crap as people give the Wii for, like you know, bad third party support and God, some of those third party games are awful. Sure. I mean, what the Wii yeah. did for the industry yeah. was pretty amazing. Um, it opened up video games to a whole new market, um, hugely financially successful. As much as people are saying, "Oh, the Wii is dead. There's nothing good on it," but it's like it's the games media journalists out there who are just saying, "Like, oh well, our audience doesn't like the Wii, therefore the Wii is horrible." It's like, no, the Wii's great. Yeah, we live in a we live in a giant echo chamber. We, yeah, we, we have the <laughs> no, world. really, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're the hardest of hardcore, so if it doesn't appeal to us, it's obviously dead when, you know, the Wii's selling 150 million units, yeah. constantly moving games. Things like carnival games are selling 20 and 30 million units yeah. because it's just casual fun. People can <laughs> pick it up, play for 15 minutes, put it down. You yeah. hating on carnival games? <laughs> I kind of like carnival games. <laughs> Not these. <laughs> I, I gotta say, um, the Wii U, actually having a chance to sit down with it is a fan fantastic system mm -hmm. it really now that they finally gotten a few more like quality of life stuff into it it's not the top top end but the games on it are really fun um smash brothers mm -hmm. is, ridiculous. is ridiculously good mm -hmm. uh, and the mario kart game and i mean i've bought systems for way less <laughs> yeah. um and now that they actually have like fairly decent like um store support you can get things mm -hmm. online yeah which is the whole reason i had and you know, played the Xbox for so long so that I can play some stupid uh, thing. Xbox Live Arcade. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, Xbox Live Arcade. <laughs> I remember checking Xbox Live Arcade every week for new releases. Oh, good times. Shoot. <laughs> can I get Shadow Complex 2, please? <laughs> oh, man. Shadow Complex. Yes. I haven't thought about that Shadow one. Shadow Complex was, was really great. That I was. I, I gotta say, Branch Narrative, best choice. You just say, Nah, I'm going home. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to save anyone. He looks so smug when he does it. Dude. You literally, once you get to your jeep, you can crawl in the jeep and go home. <laughs> I didn't want to save my girlfriend, anyways. I think he literally says that. <laughs> he just drives away. Oh, the, uh, Hilarious. The, uh, the one branching choice in uh, Arkham City, when Catwoman can walk out with the briefcases, and the game ends. That's great. The game just ends. It's Barbara Gordon saying, "We've lost. Batman's dead." 
helpless. <laughs> and I love that so much. So good. Huh. Very nice. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm talking to the baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Batman agrees with this. The Batman agrees. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's interesting what they've done with the Wii U and how Nintendo takes steps with everything. Like that's that's the one thing that I've always adored about them is whether or not the it, they they've always kind of been like Apple to me mm-hmm. in that they yeah. don't necessarily follow whatever the current trend is and whether or not it's necessarily good press they they know what they yeah. what is good for them and their company yeah. um, and so like I mean even with something like where we talk about how we can get more people into like into the living room to play a video game um, like even with something like Smash that. Brothers yeah. yeah they did that and like even like with the new Smash Brothers um, Smash has been around now like it's blown it, I've was thinking about that this weekend when I was picking it up is like it's been around for some like almost an entire generation like mm-hmm. the generation what they're calling it generation Z now mm-hmm. um, of kids like who are under 18 right now like mm-hmm. their entire lives Smash Brothers has been around and so because of that um, it's it's part of like the gaming zeitgeist mm-hmm. and so because of that they can now acceptably add something like an eight player Smash Brother game whereas like oh, in, whereas in previous versions they wouldn't have been able to do that partially because of hardware yeah, I was gonna say hardware. <laughs> but then also just because like you're often not going to get eight people in a room who yeah. know how to play Smash um, and they were able to do that on this one and do it successfully and it's fantastic well, especially because it's such a big party game you know it's yeah like, now it's not just four people at the TV you can have eight people at a time yeah, I would also mm-hmm. mention that TVs have gotten a lot bigger yeah, yeah. <laughs> that too. I, yeah. just, I just have to say the ability to use your 3DS as a controller is pretty cool. The best thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just really great. I'm going to break my poor 3DS, yeah. but oh, yeah. see, I little thumb things just can go. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't bring myself to do it because the reissue of the GameCube controller is so nice. It is mm-hmm. actually quite it's good. It's really good, and it's just so perfect. Fits in your hand, and it's just like you know, it's like falling into an old you know old pair of jeans of just perfect. <laughs> I will say the Pro Controller feels amazing. It's one of my favorite controllers ever. See, I don't like it. Oh, yeah. Um, even even controlling uh, Smash with a tablet yeah. works pretty well. And especially like when you talk about screen size, like if you get eight people on the screen, like you actually have an advantage if you had a tablet, can, which is kind of cool. Yeah. If they had added some type of asymmetric play, that would have been even better. But. Mm-hmm. but yeah, to your point, Doc, the uh, the big screen does help with eight yeah. players. Mm-hmm. Um, we tried playing at a friend's house like the day it came out. We were uh, at some friends, and they're in a little apartment. So they got this like little maybe 30-inch TV, not very big, um, and it became extremely hard to see <laughs> where everyone was. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of one of us was um, uh, nearsighted, um, so it made it even more oh, difficult. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but yeah, no. And then we got back to uh, our place, and we've got a bigger TV, and it's like, okay, this is what it was meant to look like, and it's pretty awesome, actually. There so. are disadvantages, though. You go back and watch one of your favorite shows from the mm-hmm. you know early two thousands that was so great, and suddenly you can see, oh, they're on a set, and yeah. it looks like crap. <laughs> <laughs> I had that experience with Stargate. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> no, I ruined it. Oh no! Uh, this gone. It looks but the, like uh, a big plastic ring. <laughs> <laughs> That's because it's a big plastic uh, ring. It's because uh, no. My best example of that was uh, Babylon Five. Oh, the CG's not very good. <laughs> I remember the shadow sips looking really menacing. They look like a, a blender. Like, <laughs> like, babies they were awesome, man. I was like, oh, no. Look, Lord of the Rings actually kind of had the same problem. Really? Um, because when they did the uh, the Blu- Blu-ray release, they had, like, this national-wide, like, marathon where, mm-hmm. like, they had um, one film per night, and you went to watch it on the big screen in, like, high definition, remastered, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then that many years later, when you're more accustomed to good CG, you mm-hmm. see, oh, it's rough. yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's not, rough. it's not bad, but it's very clearly like this was 2001 CG mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can tell. I remember going back and watching, uh, being a nerd, watching reboot. Oh gosh. <laughs> it is brutal. It is it really is awful. awful. We have come so far. The screen tearing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, just from the technical reasons, let alone the visual and aesthetics. Yeah. I watched the crap out of that show. <laughs> <laughs> And All Canadian, every bit of Canadian goodness that came from that. <laughs> and it was extremely weird and Canadian. <laughs> but it was fair. so good. It was so good. Especially the later shows when it decided to go really dark. <laughs> it's like, yes. Yeah, it's so good. He comes you back know from the net. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Years <laughs> older. Yeah, yeah. He looks, yeah, he looks like, um, like cable or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. No, it's totally. <laughs> Basically cable. <laughs> this is what will happen to you if you spend the rest of your life on the internet. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, man. That means I get a crazy gun. Oh, 
It was just a PSA, the entire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, speaking of childhood memories and movies, you know what movie stands up really well visually? Jurassic Park. Yes. Yeah. Jurassic really? Park. Yeah, it does. Oh, three. Um, the, the, you think the big shot where they show the big uh, dinosaur is going to be like, oh man, it's going to look so corny, and it doesn't. It looks like <laughs> like the, the, the dinosaur on its side. You think, oh man, that's going to look like a big puppet. No, it looks like a dinosaur sitting on it. It's like, this is movie's going to stand the test of time. But they were, uh, I'm really excited for the new one. I wonder if part of that, though, is that we don't have any real world reference for dinosaurs. Uh, that could also be true. <laughs> yeah. 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 They should have had feathers. <laughs> they should have, and they're, not, they're probably not going to do that for the new movie. No, either. I have the no, trailer loading on my phone as we speak, so... <laughs> Uh, I, like I want to see a giant turkey. That's what I want to see. A giant I, I think turkey. that would be amazing. <laughs> that might be more terrifying than dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> it, might, it might actually be. <laughs> I just love. I just love. Uh, the creatures came from. Um, the creatures came from the Jim Henson factory, correct? Mm-hmm. I believe so. Yeah. yeah, they've always done good work. And that's the thing is when you get yeah. the masters of the masters. Like if you go back and watch the original. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies, the turtle suits don't look bad. Mm. They get prog- progressively worse as the movies go along, but the yeah. original suits, awesome. Yeah. Two, love the movie. It's crap everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's still a good movie. Yeah, you are going to say something? Uh, yeah, I actually had something to contribute. Two things. <laughs> Shocking. Um, well, the first, going on what Carson was just saying, um, I was actually reading on Reddit, lol, um, there's a huge discussion they're having in the Lord of the Rings subreddit, actually, about how the original Lord of the Rings visually was actually better than, uh, The Hobbit. Mm, less CG. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they were doing like, physical prosthetics, and they're saying that having physical things will, at least usually continue to look more realistic and terrifying than CG because as CG progresses mm. and as you were saying earlier mm. we'll see the errors yeah. shall we say yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing is Jurassic Park actually I was really shocked when they did the what was it the 10 year re-release or mm-hmm. whatever a couple years ago 3D. yeah when I saw it in 3D it actually mm. transitioned into 3D really well and I was surprised oh. because mm. usually CG does better than mm-hmm. you know something realistic for that mm. and I had seen uh, Nightmare Before Christmas I think it was in 2008 when they did a 3D version of that and even though that's my favorite movie, mm-hmm. there were only a couple scenes that actually looked good as 3D. Yeah. Or even looked 3D, but mm-hmm. then Jurassic Park just totally blew it out of the water. Mm-hmm. Nuts. I wonder who uh, who did the upscaling for that. I don't know, but it was nuts. awesome. Mm-hmm. It's actually a really good way to look at it. Because, um, like, I mean, you can see, um, like, even in, say, something like, like within games, um, even to this day, we can go back and play, and we've had it like a renaissance of pixel art games, and you can go back and play. We've been talking about like the NES and Super NES, and despite, and while well, that was, of course, all that the hardware could capably do at that time, and they were pushing the hardware, if you will. Um, I guess because there is a separation between that 2D and 3D now, and we don't see necessarily the advancement of 2D versus you know old 2D. Um, it's it's we're able to play them, whereas like really, it's almost unfortunate with early CG stuff oh and like my gosh. Early, like I mean with PS1 yeah. and 64 stuff. Trying those are almost like lost awful. years now. It's yeah. it's like really actually difficult for me to actually mm-hmm. even comprehend what's happening on screen, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's going to continue to happen. Like I would say, like in another ten years, Xbox may be that way, mm-hmm. unfortunately, and and yet like with 2D stuff, I, I think that's more timeless. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes me wonder, like uh, exactly as you said, like the difference between like The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings stuff, and the fact that it's physical versus CG. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I think that's why, like Chris Nolan's work, will always look good because he he when he can he doesn't embrace CG yeah. and he likes to practical try to make effects. actual yeah. practical effects. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think you see the same sort of thing with the Star Wars films, especially mm. because the early Star Wars films they all use practical effects and models and ships, mm-hmm. and they yeah. still look great to this day. Also, it, it's helped because they're all dirty ships and they all yeah. are supposed <laughs> to look like funkers and broken down. Mm. So any sort of flaws that you see also, your your mind just kind of goes, oh, those, that's supposed to be there. It's, mm-hmm. it's a broken down ship. It's been running for hundreds of years. I will. Uh, the new Star Wars films tried to get, try to have all that, that CG and, and computerized look and everything was supposed to be nice and pristine and clean. Everything's chrome in the future. Right. And you just go back to it. Um, I know Phantom <laughs> Menace I don't think ever looked good, quite frankly. But you go back to Phantom Menace now and it, it's like Babylon 5 level. <laughs> I mean, it's that sort of level. 
Um, I don't know where the new Star Wars film is going in that direction. I, I they're actually to do. Uh, have you heard the story of the uh, the girl who saved Star Wars? No. No. This is... Uh, and George Lucas's <laughs> wife, the editor of... No! <laughs> <laughs> Well, that would be fantastic. No, the um, uh, 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 British actor, uh, Shaun of the Dead. Um, Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg's uh, daughter, he was, watch, she, he was making her watch all of the Star Wars because he's a big nerd and that's what he does. Um, <laughs> first three movies, she liked them. They're good. Um, mm-hmm. With your kid, they're really fun. Um, and then she starts watching the, you know, the original trilogy and she gets to Yoda and she says, goes to her dad and says, Yoda. Or that, that Yoda. That Yoda is real. <laughs> and apparently that story made it to the production team and convinced them to work more in that real effects. Awesome. Um, because that, that kind of childlike wonder, Dad, Yoda is real. After seeing the CG first three movies and then seeing him yeah. as this... And really, the puppet of him is awful. <laughs> but it is real. And yeah. air quotes that you can't see in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, for a series that really does, you know, draw on the whole strength of childlike wonder, mm-hmm. no matter how old you are, I mean, that's the draw of Star Wars, um, <laughs> to make a very bold statement, um, you know, that to have it so cleanly put, I think is really convincing. And 88 seconds of the movie is going to be shown this Friday. Yes. So, yep. Oh, yeah, it's true. It's true. I yeah. don't want to be excited, but I am. Oh, we're, oh, we're, all, we're all excited. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, another, another spot where practical is kind of being on CG is horror. Mm-hmm. Go back and watch seventies horror. They all look terrifying because of the practical yeah. blood gore and the and the slashing. It feels almost visceral. If you look at The Walking Dead, mm-hmm. those kills feel visceral because they're crushing facsimile skulls and having you know barbecue pop out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's true. <laughs> I can't. That's why I can't watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you feel it. it. You feel every mm-hmm. time somebody whacks somebody in the head with a machete. Whereas if you're watching you know, the newer Jason films or whatever. Those kills don't feel nearly as real when you realize, mm-hmm. oh, that's CG of her, you know, falling through the woods. Yeah, I do wonder if a part of it is if uh, like practical allows for more of a suspension of disbelief as mm-hmm. well. Um, I know that like uh, I think Adam, you and I have talked about it in the fact that I've never really been able to get into live action sci-fi right. like Stargate because I I can't do that. I, you know, I <laughs> I see these things and I see humans in these places that in these sets that don't look real and I can't do it. And yet I watch a ton of anime sci-fi and I accept yeah. that because it's all animated and it seems more, more acceptable. Yeah, because because I, I'm able to suspend that. Just really is yeah. all in your background, yeah. Right, yeah. I wonder if part of that is because practical effects is all about the illusion and people have been sort of honing illusion in film for a long time to create, because we know it's a flat plane we're looking right. at. Right. If we it's, can make it look this way, they'll believe right. it. Right, it's not that practical effects look better. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's that they look worse in a particular way. Mm, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, even, if right. it's, even if it does come across as kind of corny, like, I mean, right. even in, like, the original cut of Star Wars, mm. like, when you see the Death Star blowing up, it's but, very obvious that it's a model, it, exactly. But it's it's very obvious that it, it almost... I've always thought that, that the, the ease of knowing that something's fake makes it easier for us to... Yes. Suspend our disbelief. Right. To me, it was about consistency. Mm. Also, you know, whenever you get to that two-headed alien that Greg Proops is kind of making up as he goes along, yeah. and makes this you know anachronistic comment about being from another galaxy, that that was my moment. Mm-hmm. That was where Star Wars died for me. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and so, just like any holiday. Uh, eventually, the conversation will go to controversial subjects, and we <laughs> talked about Star Wars. So, right. I, and, and then nobody has died. Yeah. Well, yeah, I will say that there was a there's a very fantastic game, uh, a traditional board game. It's local, it's Dallas, and it's on Kickstarter right now. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> called the Great Debate. Um, and one of the questions, and so the big thing about the Great Debate is ask a question, and there's two responses, and you have to pick one to argue. And then, based on whatever text on the card, you pick someone else at the table to answer the other one. Huh. Um, so it'd be really interesting, and kind of like you pick which side you want to argue. And one of them was Star Trek versus Star Wars, which is the better franchise. Um, I lost that one because I was funny, and I mentioned uh, I, I had to argue for Star Wars, <laughs> and I mentioned um, the holiday special. That, that okay. joke didn't go over well. <laughs> I still think, as a franchise, just by the very fact of how many entries there are in the franchise. Star Wars probably is better 
just by critical mass. Mm. <laughs> but um, that was my I argument. By the way, there's more hours of Star Trek. Honestly, a lot more. Ah, uh, a lot more hours. When you consider all the TV series and uh, all of the Star Trek films. But when you all consider all the, the comics, universe, yeah. comics, books, books games, games. content, not hours, Jim. Yeah, content. Like, I can tell you. Because uh, I, I think there's still more if you count all the comics, books, and uh, um, the, the, the games. It's, there's more Star Wars than Star Wars. And don't Trek. discount the Christmas special, the Ewok movies, uh, the droids cartoons. There's more cartoons. Well, okay, actually, no, there's, no, there's more Star Wars cartoons than Star Trek. What have been more recent ones, yeah. I think just in content wise, there's more. Not to say that it's better. Although, as an Although aside, that is what I tried to argue. <laughs> as an aside, and speaking actually to what uh, Eric just said, have you seen the Star Trek cartoon? Yes. The original series cartoon. It is it's, better than the show. Quite good. And I think it, it comes down to one very simple thing, and it's what you just said. There, There's like a, a red alien with a really skinny neck that they never could have done in the original show. The special effects are better. Hmm. They're more consistent, and you believe it because it's all. And so that's where, I, where I'm going with that. Is to me, it's about consistency. Yeah. And the problem that I had with the original Star Wars is, is um, well, tell you tell you a true story. I went to see it in IMAX, um, which I immediately regretted because hmm. I never wanted to be that close to Ewan McGregor's pores. <laughs> <laughs> and you could see them. I mean, it was just. It was up, and, and they looked like actors on a stage, and everything was digital. Yeah. And I think the biggest problem that those Star Wars movies had of everything, of everything, everything, say what you will about everything, I think the biggest problem that they had was that one very, very tiny visual problem of the foreground and the background were both yes. in focus. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and the truth is, if you go and you watch something like the Phantom Edit with these you know, cheesy, ripped, uh, you know, really bad, tiny screen online, it's, it's actually made available free online mm -hmm. so, so go check it out if you've never seen the Phantom Edit just google it uh, but it actually presents visually just like the original movies because the quality is worse, <laughs> worse. Mm. Yeah. and that right there is enough you know take out the Jar Jar stepping in the poopy and, you, and you've got a movie but very little needs to be done to a Phantom Menace to make it watchable. That's right. I won't say anything for the other two movies. Uh, I'd say three's pretty watchable. Three's pretty watchable. Yeah, <laughs> I thought three was pretty decent. Pretty easily the, the best. And it, I think that's why people get so angry is because they're so close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, if you want to make those movies work, turn down the resolution on your television. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Is just kick it back to an SD Ooh. quality and give it a shot. I need to like uh, dub it to a VHS a few times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, or, or, you know, Ooh, I want to see uh, Guardians of the Galaxy that way now. Switch it over oh, to Mono. No. Oh, oh, there you I wanna, go. I wanna, I wanna, say, when I get Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. DVD, what I'm going to do is copy it to a VHS and then watch it like that. That's going to be amazing. Well, make sure you do it on extended play. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. that's extended play. I, I know we do not have time for this conversation, but I'd love to get your feelings on the machete order someday. I don't know that one. Oh, really? Yeah, so okay. that's a very so short conversation. I'll, <laughs> so I'll go ahead and explain it and right. then let you think about it okay, real quick. Cool. So essentially, um, it was a guy on his blog. He does like a tech blog where he like talks about like programming stuff. And one week he decided, I'm going to talk about Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And the reason he did it is because he had like a niece or nephew coming over who had never mm -hmm. seen it before. And he really thought... Sh what order should I do this? And should I do oh, like the yeah, chronological? Yeah, 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 You've yeah. heard about this, yeah. It's, it's a really, awesome. it really it's, is quite good. It's it's like it's like three thousand words, and he really gives a good argument for why he does it in this okay. order. And so what he says is narratively the way that it makes the most sense to him is to watch it episodes four and five, mm -hmm. and then skip back to episode two, and then watch two and three, and then jump to episode six. And you actually skip episode one. Um, and the reason that he did this, on one hand, he goes over, here's why you skip episode one. Not because it's bad, not because of Jar Jar. You skip episode one because there's actually not one piece of information that's required to know yep. in any of the later movies. Um, there's, like, literally everything from episode yeah. one can be Red Letter can be Media lost. covers that. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I think Concept, so. Yeah. And so anyway, but then what's really cool about it is um, what happens is it's really the story of the father and the son and how their stories parallel each other is really what Star Wars is to him. And so what yeah. happens is if you watch episodes four and five, you see Luke and all of and him being told by Obi-Wan and everybody else, it, well, I guess Yoda at the time, um, about his father and about the dangers of the dark side. 
and then of course you end with a cliffhanger of him meeting his father and right. then seeing what happens huh. and then if you were to go to the dark side then you get a flashback of now you see his father's rise to power huh. and uh, and what's really cool what really got me on it was um, at the end of episode 3 it ends with Anakin um, of course reaching the dark side and then you see all of the perils of what happens if you reach that and he dies angrily and then he loses everything at the beginning of Reven- of uh, Revenge of the... Uh, oh, blanking on the name right now. The, the, Return, Return, of Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, Revenge of the Jedi. Yeah, Revenge awesome. of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, original title. Okay, oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At the very beginning of that, you then see Luke dressed in all black, looking oh. angry, just as his father did. And you start to wonder, for somebody who's never seen these movies before, to that person, is Luke going to fall to the dark side just as their father did? That, that would be a great... For, I wish I could blunt force trauma movies out of my head. <laughs> yeah. We can help. <laughs> well, I haven't seen him in about ten years. I could probably do it. Could we, could I, we would, an I really love that idea. I, I love that, that ordering. I think narratively, it's, it's the most interesting. Mm-hmm. The, the one flaw that I, that I would have personally with it just because I've seen um, all the movies is the quality of two is just so poor that you would to me at least once you once you watch Empire Strikes Back and then you follow Empire Strikes Back in my opinion the best of the bunch <laughs> yeah. right. probably the worst of the bunch mm-hmm. and I say this I don't even like Jar Jar but I still think that Phantom Menace had a little, was a little bit better than Attack of the Clones and you have that kind of in terms just, of pacing I agree yeah I mean like the the way that the the, um, the difference between those two movies is just so stark in terms of quality I think that you would have a lot of trouble making mm. interest for someone mm. that hasn't really mm. seen the rest of the series. I think it would be fun yeah. to try at least. You know, Anakin's character oh, would be I consistent would, if you did that. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> I wonder if you could edit down two just so it focused on the Obi-Wan and Anakin parts and kind of compress it and have that be like a you know a 3.5 that covers all of it as sort of a flashback that Yoda's giving Luke. Because we don't to the point... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hear, That's brilliant. hear me out. If, if if what happens between Luke getting his arm fixed and him showing up on Tatooine to go rescue Han? We don't really know. It's handled in the EU, I believe. I'm yeah, sure at least twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what if you just had Luke go to Dagobah and basically tell Yoda, you were right, what's really going on? Yoda and he kicks in to saying, well, here's how what happened to your friend. Huh. Boom. Goes in, you pick up six with him actually realizing... This is what happened to my father. You see him in the black. You see him looking angry. But he has the knowledge of here's what can happen to you. That's also okay. really awesome. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. And I that do notice good. that this is podcast started on video games. And somehow we've gotten nerdier. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> fan, fan edits of Star Wars movies really is. <laughs> I don't want to say the bottom of the barrel because that implies that I think that it's awful and I think it's amazing. But it is definitely the most extreme. The zenith <laughs> of nerdiness. Zenith of nerdiness. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Flip it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I think that's about a good point for us to start wrapping up. Um, one last thing I'd like to do, if you guys are up for it, is to go around the table and ask what games are you going to be playing here over the holiday season? Um, so, like, maybe the one or two top things you're looking to get into next. So, Bobby. Well, um, I hate to say it, after 40 hours, I'm still not even halfway through it. I'm going to be playing Binding of Isaac until my eyes bleed quite appropriately. <laughs> I've played it lots, and my eyes bleed constantly. <laughs> You mean in-game, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things you the can't. first, the original game, I have 300 hours placed into it. My goodness. Uh, and this game is looking to be just about as long. Um, Are you it, playing it on console or? Uh, on PC. Okay. With the controller. With the expansions? Uh, no, the, the new one. The, the new, new Binding of Isaac. Binding of uh, Yes. Which is called what? Um... Rebirth? Rebirth, Rebirth, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and he's planning the DLC, which means that I'm going to be playing it more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the one that's on console. It was actually yeah. it was free. The console is yeah. brilliant, uh, uh, brilliant um, move on his part to get it there. Oh yeah. Um, I, if you're ever interested, he writes really good postmortems, uh, mm-hmm. especially on Binding of Isaac, where he starts <coughs> out saying this game was designed to fail, and then describes how it didn't fail. <laughs> that's cool. Wow. Because it was Binding of Isaac was uh, the original one. Is as he. He deliberately set out to make a game that nobody would buy. That he only he and he alone wanted, and then it kind of surprising like he was surprised when the YouTube picked it up. Well, you know, there's a moral in that, and it's you shouldn't 
design yeah. games for other people. Mm-hmm. You should design games you would yeah. play. It's like any art, really. Yeah, yeah. well, that's true. Yeah, it's, it's a good moral because that, I, seriously, I, if you look at my Steam, 300 hours in the original Binding of Isaac. Mm-hmm. Um, and since Binding of Isaac, the sequel, remake, whatever, has come out, it's 40 hours. I never play a game for that long. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of nuts. Have you unlocked Azazel yet? Uh, absolutely, Azazel's the best. He's awesome. <laughs> I have unlocked all but the super secret characters. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm not going to spoil. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, well, I probably won't be playing anything for Thanksgiving, because as I said earlier, my GPU is broken. Uh, and oof. if I do get that fixed by Christmas, my plan is... Um, to start Skyrim for the third time. <laughs> third time's a charm, right? Um, and also, I'd like to finish... Uh, I was playing the Nightmare Before Christmas PS2 game as an emulator on my PC, I'd, so I'd like to finish that, too. Huh. I know that one very well. Uh, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is... You will reach a certain point where you realize when they ran out of money. <laughs> well, I'm tired of hearing Soul Robber. <laughs> <laughs> Soul Robber! Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good times. Uh, whew. I will be broing down hard. Uh, nothing but shooters. Um, Far Cry, Advanced Warfare, which I know Call of Duty sort of burned a lot of people out. Advanced Warfare is really, really good. I'm dumbfounded at how well Sledgehammer did. Uh, and then um, getting my fighting game chops back. Smash Brothers and Killer Instinct. Oh, Killer so cool. Instinct. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it was good in season one. Iron Galaxy has done some great bouncing. Conrad's a mm. lot of fun. It's mm. a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, man, just thrown out. <laughs> get some monster. Just, just get an IV of monster <laughs> going into your system. IV of monster. <laughs> MLG, let's do it. <laughs> Blaze it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll have Doritos and Moss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doc. Well, you know, I, I have always gone to the midnight release for Assassin's Creed, and this time mm. I didn't. It's the first time I didn't put it on pre order. It's the first time I didn't do any of that. And part of the reason was that there were two games that were coming out. Mm. And so I've been kind of watching and looking here mm. and ear to the ground, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get Unity and I'm going to play it. Instead of uh, hmm. the other one, Rogue. Rogue, Rogue yeah. Hmm. Uh, so that that's kind of an interesting twist for me. But hmm. um, yeah, it's it's nothing to do with you know samey gameplay. I'm I'm fine with samey <laughs> gameplay. And, you know, I, I love uh, I love that series mostly because I I've been to most of the places that are profiled, and that's I've actually stood. You know, mm. on tops of these towers and things like not all of them, obviously, but I mean mm. that my you know my moment for that game was in two, mm. whenever uh, they were on top of the Florence Cathedral, the Duomo, and you know I'm standing there and, and I'm like I've been there. Mm. Nice. Know, it's been a decade, but I and I'm just like yes, mm. and, and mm-hmm. then just it it carried me. It's carried me through the entire thing, and I really like the boats when, and what they did with four and uh, and all that. And I think the meta story is fun too, but. Um, for for me, mostly what it comes down to is, um, I guess, brand loyalty. Can <laughs> okay. I say that? I yeah. don't know. Um, Strongest thing the series has going for it, honestly. It really does, you know. And and it's funny because I, I skipped um, I skipped three. Was it three? As you should in, entirely. Um, you know, I, I just did. I mean, I had it. Mm-hmm. I owned it. I played it for a little while, but I didn't finish it. No, I was disappointed Which by it. Yeah. That was American Revolution. Oh, yeah. but you know, if there's anybody wondering why like that happened. Not. It's actually really, really simple. They started planning two and three at the same time because the 2012 mm-hmm. was coming, and they knew they were going to run out oh, of time, right. so they split the teams. So what you have is something that organically grew out of one uh, in two completely different mm-hmm. ways. Interesting. And that's that the reason sense. why the controls were different. That's huh. the reason. They, they didn't keep the stuff that worked mm-hmm. because they were building off the original yeah. game. So the, the first few Assassin's Creed games are this kind of amazing pile of... And then you can clearly see that the game, the the whole mm-hmm. like genre, yeah. Oh, yeah, clears out after that. Well, there's so I, many, I really like three so many lessons to be learned from what mm-hmm. we did with that, and you know, just just like how they quadrupled the team size on one, and went from a hundred people to four hundred people. Nobody ever had four hundred people is on a, a game team before, yeah. and now that's that's almost standard for a big you know mega mm-hmm. game like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and it was the most gorgeous game that had come out. No, you brilliant. know when when Assassin's Creed One came out, mm. I just stood at the TV and went, oh, "I'm playing now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is not a cutscene. Wow, mm. 
and that became my object lesson for years. <laughs> it really did. But um, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to be doing. Cool. Um, that and of course Shadow and Mortar. Once, uh, mm-hmm. once Dad brings it back. <laughs> cool. Um, I will I will be playing a heavy amount of Smash Brothers. That's um, I mean that's one of my favorite series just in general. Even though I'm not really the world's biggest fighting game player, just mm-hmm. something about Smash has always got. It, it's the one fighting game that I can actually feel like I can master. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, I've I've taken my shots at trying to learn fighting games here mm-hmm. and there at like. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taking Street Fighter a little bit more seriously and learning the horrible mistake that that was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so much frame. Oh, it's just it's such an awesome like chess match, and yet you just have to learn the execution. It's so yeah. difficult. Um, awesome chess match. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so yeah, I'll be doing a lot of that. But the most important to me is by far Dragon Age. Um, the the first one is is maybe my favorite game of all time. I've put more time into that than maybe any other game I've ever played. Um, it's one of the few franchises that I've ever actually really been able to truly geek mm-hmm. out on and actually read everything in this franchise as much as I love um, Mass Effect and have always kind of been envious especially after the second game of like the Mass Effect fans because they kind of got the better games mm-hmm. um, I, I've just always been a fantasy buff and like sure. what Guider did with um, with fantasy and dark fantasy and how he took the typical Tolkien design and changed just a few things to make it feel unique and fresh it was really cool and uh, the fact that Inquisition has not only been getting as much good press as it has been, but... Hugely good press. Yeah, like, and that has been... I've been doing my best over the past year to actually stay away from everything, mm-hmm. so I don't really have that many expectations, mm-hmm. but um, other than the fact that, yes, it's good, so mm-hmm. I'm super excited to finally sink my teeth into that. Very nice. Um, yeah, I'm with you. Smash Bros. is going to be a big one, uh, both on 3DS and Wii U, but more Wii U now, because I actually cleared all the challenges on 3DS before Wii U came out. Um... And then catching up on a bunch of games that I've started but haven't finished. Um, Borderlands, the pre-sequel, uh, Civilization Beyond Earth. Um, I need game. to play Tales from Borderlands, mm-hmm. like, probably tonight. We'll see. <laughs> um, and then, of course, Inquisition's going to be kind of like the big RPG grind. So. Oh, I have to throw in a game that people may not notice that uh, realize it's coming out and I'll have to play over the, the holiday. Mm-hmm. Um, Dreamfall Chapters. And it's been getting good reviews. Mm-hmm. As an adventure game fan. Very nice. So, yeah. Excellent. How about you, John? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to once again return to uh, Fire Emblem Awakening. Nice. Um, I I spent hundreds of hours in the game, and I actually still haven't beaten it because I keep getting obsessed with mm. trying to level up all of my child units. <laughs> yeah. And, um, it just has become an obsession. After a while, I'll, I'll sort of lose interest, but I just spend way too much time trying to min-max my whole party. And I'll put it down, and every time I pick it back up, I start all over again. So that's why I have so many hours. <laughs> and this time I'm going to once again start all over and hopefully actually finish. Um, Good luck. The other game I really am, am getting into, um, I recently, about a few months back, I played through uh, Shadowrun Returns. Mm. Um, it's like a tactical um, RPG. I absolutely loved it. And um, well, even though there were a lot of uh, flaws that people kind of pointed out, it really didn't, didn't really bother me. Um, and there was an expansion that came out uh, called Dragonfall that I haven't played yet and it was supposed to fix all of these problems mm-hmm. and be an even better game um, and so I've been kind of excited to play it and I'm going to have a chance to play through that so I'm really looking forward to uh, playing through that one nice. if you all are not familiar it's a, a cyberpunk um, RPG tactical RPG very, very much very um, good very very much into that you know sort of like uh, thinking players RPG where you have to plan out your moves it, it is um more you know Western inspired than something like a Fire Emblem Awakening. But uh, did you did you I noticed you uh, seem to have uh, some recognition there, Bobby. Have you played oh, yeah. Shadow Run Returns? Uh, I, yeah, I've played Returns. I haven't played the expansion, and I played the Super Nintendo and the Genesis versions uh, quite nice. extensively. So mm. uh, it is a fantastic series, and I've not played, but I've read a lot of the tabletop game, which they're all based off of, mm. uh, which includes. A literal dragon becoming president, and that makes it the best thing ever. <laughs> dragon president cyberpunk. Awesome. I, I just looked at the rulebook for that thing. I was just so intimidated by all the rules and numbers. Yeah. I'm like, I appreciate the world from afar. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. It's a great atmosphere. It really does. It yeah. really does. It's a great it's, and yeah, it, depending on what you think of uh, cyberpunk in general, I think that's probably the one that does it easily the best. Mm. Cool. It's cyberpunk with elves. Very nice. nice. 
All right, so I think that's going to do it for us here today. Uh, thank you for joining us for episode number 17, the big Thanksgiving special. And thank you to all of you guys for joining us here today. Uh, maybe just go around the table real quick. I'm Chris. I'm Jim. I'm Bobby. I'm Brianna. I'm Karsten. I'm Doc. I'm Eric. And thank you for joining us. See you next time. Smug for president. We want you to join the discussion on our website, backward-compatible.com. You bring a unique perspective, and dialogue makes everyone better. This time, tell us about your favorite holiday gaming traditions. Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay compatible. Stay compatible.